And welcome to everybody to this week's episode of Omega Dawn. Uh, welcome back to all the players and all the people who are watching this live or or even uh, on YouTube later. Um, a brief recap. The crew, if that's what we're calling ourselves, uh, are currently exploring a uh, primitive society on an alien planet looking for high-tech items. Um, Apparently, they've managed to locate some. Uh, unfortunately, the high-tech items seem to be in the possession of the primitive culture known as Heliopes. Uh, it seems to be in the possession of the Heliope priests. Um, most of Heliopes are, are purely nomadic tribes. There is one tribe of uh, settled, if that's the word, Heliopes. Uh, and this is where the... Uh, uh, the uh, group currently is mainly, acti mainly active. Um, it's night. Uh, the group have just finished raiding the uh, priest's compound, uh, which is situated slightly away from the village, out on the river, on pylons and piers. Um, unfortunately, they did, in the process of liberating their, uh, their employer and captain, a Russ by the name of Maximilia, uh, managed to kill uh, four priests uh, and uh, seriously wound, knock out a couple of others. In the process, though, have managed to recover several alien-designed uh, auto pistols uh, and uh, what the group is calling a gamma gun, I believe, which is a pistol that shoots radiation. It's a ray as gun. As well as... It's a ray gun, yes. A gamma ray gun, uh, apparently. Um, they've also managed to recover a black and red uh, rod, about 30 centimetres long and a centimetre and a half wide, which they believe is the access device to a alien hover tank, which they discovered underneath the pyramid of the uh, Heliot village wooden pyramid uh, the wooden pyramid is hollow uh, is of, of apparently of great religious significance uh, and there was a hover tank underneath the pyramid inside it uh, the hover tank had a uh, some sort of electri electrical security screen on it uh, which apparently the Heliates found quite pleasant to touch but which when one of the uh, group touched it hurt uh, <laughs> I think we can agree that's a, a, a fair understatement. Yes, um, it, it definitely hurt. I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's the situation at the moment. Oh, uh, one other thing, uh, just to bring everyone back up to speed. Um, sometime yesterday, when the group was out talking to some nomadic Heliopes, the village Heliopes were attacked by um, some sort of creatures... Uh, the best that the group can determine, um, they may have been uh, robots, only because one of the party thinks that um, he found some uh, tracks which were tracked tracks from a caterpillar track type situation. Uh, there is certainly nothing high tech enough around to cause that, um, and so the party is a little bit wary of of this strange um, attack force which uh, killed a couple of Heliopes and burnt down a hut with an explosion or two, I believe. Did I miss anything, anyone? No. Only that Cerise is convinced it's another Sapphire artifact. Okay, there you go. And Cerise believes it's another Sapphire artifact. Well, <coughs> folks still that. doubts the robot theory. It's, it's insane. He spent too many... Too much time with robots. There you go. You were saying, James? Uh, we've had no steam baths either. And we've had no steam baths. Yes, of course. Sorry. Forgot to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, sometime after midnight, uh, and you've just made it back to the um, lake shore from the um, priest complex. Um, so far, no alarm has been raised. Uh, there are, as there were when you left to go out to the river 
complex. Um, a couple of the young Heliot Bucks on general patrol, although just as before they seem to be patrolling the outer edge of the village near the jungle and not paying any particular attention at all to the to the lakeside shore. So you're pretty sh you're pretty certain, without being 100%, that you uh, have not yet been discovered in your nefarious activities. Well, I think before we head out past head out along the one kilometer, we need to have a an agreed upon approach to what we do before we return to the shore. All right. So if you want to have a quick conversation before you reach shore, yeah, go for your eyes. Yeah, so Cerise says to the, everybody, basically, I, th I think what we need to do is is we are messengers of the gods. Uh, the gods have punished the uh, priests for not following their message. The message is that the technology is left there for all Heliopes to learn from so that the Heliopes can um, learn how the, the, these items work and create new ones so that they too can join the gods in the stars and um, with the attack it was a, a probe to uh, test if the Heliopes had learned to defend themselves yet which they haven't as such the priests have been punished um, I think that should be our story um, it's not that we did anything it's that the gods did something we are simply servants of the gods, and I don't think we should hide back in our hut. I mean, that's a possibility that we go back to the hut and hide, or we go to the top of the pyramid and wait to be, wait till dawn. I don't know what you guys think. That's one plan. It's not bad. I suggest a simplier plan, possibly. Um, we book like we, we walk back there, book up to the top of the pyramid, get the tank, and bust out of there and go back to the ship and take off. Okay, so Cerise is, Cerise is, uh, is uh, my sense of things, Cerise is advocating for a deception strategy, whereas Bim, that was Bim Bam, I think, uh, was uh, advocating a smash and grab strategy. Anyone else uh, want to I mean, weigh in? We, we have killed a bunch of their guys, which they're not going to be happy about, and uh, we are intending to take this tank for ourselves anyway, since then not give it to them to research with them. And we've got all their other artifacts, which I imagine we're taking with them. So saying, oh, we're going to leave these things with you guys to learn from, well, probably. Technically, we haven't taken all the artifacts. Yeah, before. like Lee Ka still have has one of the we guns, auto pistol. Needed and what was probably not safe to be left in their hands, at least to us. So the plan is to grab like the most of them tank and then get, get out of there? We're looking for extraction? Yeah, we could go in and take the hover tank and actually I guess we, whether, whatever the case, we need to go in, back into the pyramid and we're going to need a few hours to learn the, how to use the hover tank. Well, uh, if we have the hover tank to back us up, we can say what we want then. Just saying. Yeah, but again, the, uh, what is it, the, you... The Planetary Federation, the United Planetary Federation, the UPF, right? UPF. Yeah. The UPF will find out about what we do one way or another. So if we just possibly threaten well, to possibly. exterminate all of them. I don't think I don't we should harm any more of them at all. I think we just get in there where they can't hurt us and then take off. <laughs> I mean, um, well, what about the on. what about the sapphire artifact? The unknown, mysterious, we don't know where it is, that doesn't even exist. Possibly Sapphire Artifact, that one. Yeah, but they came from the east along the river. I mean, we're in rifts, so it can't be... There's not a whole lot of choices as to where it is. And why did... Why was it only like two or three of these creatures that came and attacked, and why haven't they been back? Well, it's only well, it's less than three hours. Yeah, they were they were scouts and they took off. It's not like they got killed. Scouts for what? <laughs> From the <laughs> exactly. artifact. 
Okay, well, what does the Sathar artifact do once it finds something? It sends out a message back to the Sathar territories to come and eradicate the planet. Because oh. there is now space flight at the planet. So the, the one artifact we know of from Volturnus was left behind as a basically early warning system so that if the Volturnus people ever got high technology again, the Sathar would return and, and destroy the planet or kill the people. Looking at the Rift Valley map, that artifact is probably to the, to the east of where we are now across the lake. Right? There's a nice big open plain there. I'm guessing it is a guess. But with our spaceship coming back and forth, we probably triggered the uh, warning of the artifact. And so they sent out scouts to see who we are, right? But what if the scouts uh, determined that the civilization was not capable of space flight? Well, the general rule with the, the the general consensus amongst the UPF and and scientists and all that is that, for reasons unknown, the Sathar are, seem to be intent on wiping out all non-Sathar li non-Sathar sentient life. Uh, perhaps, for example, um, the Sathar see um, spacefaring intelligent life as a threat, uh, and therefore the 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 strategy of wipe out the threat before, before it becomes a major threat. Um, which, incidentally, has been used here on Earth um, in the past um, amongst the various um, ancient and also modern civilizations. So it's a valid strategy in terms of... Uh, well, it's a, it's a strategy that has been used before. I won't say it's valid. Um, but that could be the reason. It could be any other reason. We don't know. No one knows why. But what is known is, and again, the group, as Cerise just said, the, the evidence that they picked up on Volturnus was that, yeah, um, the Sapphire will wipe, yeah, well, you know, if not wipe out, certainly wipe back to the Stone Age. Um, so these artifacts and things we have, um, please excuse me, Bim Bam says, because he's not f as familiar with all the stuff as you guys are. Do we know that they're Sathari? I mean, is that Sathari writing on them or something? Or could they no, be they other are alien species? Sapphire. Okay, so it could no. be another alien species not related to them at all. Yeah. yeah. That's right. For the record, um, and we do we have a, anyone a biologist in the group? I'm a biologist. Yes. We yeah, do. okay. Well, you would know. You would know. Well, you, you, could, you, you would be able to tell the others. Um, um, the four set the four sentient races, the four races of the frontier, uh, Vrask, Yazirian, Dralosite, and Human. The Sapphire, there are uh, Zakura, which are um, a bug-like creature which seems to be allied with the Sapphire. Um, there are um, strange, there's been five, five only cases of in five individuals of um, basically they I can't remember the na their name off the top of my head but they're about a meter in diameter of balls but they can control electricity um, <laughs> yeah, like really control electricity um, there's been five of those individuals spotted in the frontier no one knows anything else about them um, and, and uh, yeah um, and now and uh, then the, the Enora on Volturnus um, the Olmor on Volturnus the Kurubunda on Volturnus, the Escadati on Volturnus, and of course the um, Mechanons, which were a artificial race, um, that blew the mind of the guys, and it's it's still blowing the minds of, of the scientists currently studying Volturnus at the moment. Although there is evidence to say that, in fact, the Enora, the Enora, who were the original um, sentient race on Volturnus, actually. Um, explained that they would that they had been genetically manipulating the other the other races on Volturnus to bring them up to a level where they could defend themselves against the Sapphire. Um, that of course is now mute because um, the Enora look uh, have been looks like they might be joining joining the UPF um, as a 
as a you know, as a as a member state. Um, and then you've got the Heliotes here on Starnist and the people who left the artifacts who are none of the above. Uh, and you can tell they're none of the above because the um, hand grips, for want of a better term, on the uh, on the pistols and that don't fit any known biology that you that you are aware of. So it has to be another race. So the race that's allied with the Sathar can control electricity incredibly well. No, 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 no. The race that can control electricity is a, in inverted commas neutral party there's only been five individuals oh, okay. of that of that race in the frontier over the last 30 years they've only appeared 30 years ago you know first one showed up 30 years ago and you know so no one knows much about that mysterious ball race and if i wish i could remember the name of them i really wish i could um Z zether i think they are in memory i'll have to look it up um no, the the, al the Sathar ally is a bug, um, a bug-like creature. Not too dissimilar from from um, Vrask, but more more um, uh, more cockroach-like, more hive mind-like, apparently. But again, not much is known about them either. Yeah, Zethra. Z e t h r a. Thank you. What did you do? Look up the yeah, look up the um, Wikipedia, did you? Uh, I pulled up your website. They're on there under races. There you go. Thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, did you see the new website design? By the way, did you change? I didn't know it had changed. Yeah. Yes, I did. That's all right. I've been working on it the last three months. It's okay. Work's never done. <laughs> uh, no. Did you? It's all right. I'm stirring. Um, so, yeah, so that's the situation. So they're the known races, um, major races being spacefaring races and minor races being non-spacefaring races. Um, I don't know whether you guys remember, but w somebody, uh, you were discussing last session um, about the possibility um, because of the nature of what's going on that with here on Star Mist, that it's possible that the the Heliopes may have been a, a servant species to some other mob and the other mob may have dropped a whole bunch of junk and the servant species off here for some strange reason. Um, that was floated as an idea last session. Um, Again, if you had an anthropologist or an archaeologist, you'd have um, a better chance of that. But hey, that's life. <laughs> so yeah, so that's a, that's the situation. So you're still walking back or or, or part, part way back from the to to the shoreline um, on the platforms. You've got somebody, Cerise is um, suggesting a, uh, a a deception strategy. Bim Bam is suggesting a smash and grab strategy. Wh where else are we going? What else? We anyone agree, disagree, have a third strategy to uh, to 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 offer? I mean, if we smash and grab and then we leave, then we're leaving the Heliops to die. Well, I mean, they weren't really using any of the stuff, anyways. Well, I mean, machine guns, but I don't think if there's a horrible alien race intent on wiping them out coming, that a few automatic weapons would really help them. Uh, before we decide on a strategy, we just need to know what our goal is. Is our goal to take the artifacts in the tank and get away with them and sell them? I mean, if that is, then great. I think smash and grab is the best. If we have other goals, then uh, we should take those into account and figure out the best way to achieve those. We came here to make money by selling the artifacts, so we do want the tank and we want all the artifacts. It's just, how do we want to leave, and do we want to let them be wiped out by this other race that attacked them earlier. Well, my my, I, we're definitely after the artifacts. I think with what I think is the appearance of the Sathar, I think we need to investigate that. So I think we go, we get the tank, 
Um, at dawn, we can make our statement, and then we can go. I don't know if we're going to be able to hunt down the sapphire or not. Um, I think within a few days, they're probably going to launch another attack against us. Um, that's what they did before on Returnus, so I would expect a similar approach. So, um, Maybe we flee, though, and we get warning to UPF. And yeah, it's a fair way away. Travel time. I mean, it's going to be, you know, weeks before we can get warning to the UPF. And so the, if we go that route, the Heliopes are probably dead. Maybe that's not our concern. Um, but maybe we can stop the Sapphire before they do whatever it is they're going to do. Well, I should point out, we kind of casually killed the four of them, so I don't think any of us are, like, bleeding hearts for killing them. Um, if we were, we should have said so at the time. Um, oh, yeah. No, but pre uh, this previous attack, do we know it was the Sathar? We know for no, a fact it was the Sathar. Okay. So we don't so know for sure whether anybody's coming back. Sir Cerise thinks they were... Si the, so, on Volturnus, we encountered... Hold up, Max, talk again. I don't, I don't Sorry. So, on, on Volturnus, we encountered Sapphire Bio Robotics, where they had created half organic, half robotic entities, um, cyborgs, if you want to call them that, that were used to defend the artifact. I'm guessing that these were a pair of those basically tracked robots with some sort of biological entity on top. Um, I think the descriptions were, I don't remember if the, the villager descriptions were of a snake-like upper body, which would be Sathar or not. I don't remember. Um, so, no, we really don't know what attacked the village. Um, it just fits the modus operandi of the Sathar. And I don't like Sathar. I mean, yeah, that's an understatement. They're, they're highly intelligent. We could just gasp, tell them the truth, and say, well, you were a slave race. You were accidentally left here by advanced people, and, and you've been here for a long time, and you've decided they were gods, but they're not really. There are other races out there, and one of them attacked you and might be back. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, I, we, look, not I a mean, bad idea. I might have a hard time with it because of their religion, but I don't know. We could try. Well, I mean, put yourself, I mean, think, look, it's not a bad idea. My, I'm just wondering, you know, if you were to, if you were, to, if you were to go back to the Incas and say that, and say what you said to the Incas here on Earth, what would the reaction of the Incas be? Or the Egyptians? Well, we'd have to couch it in their terms a little bit. I mean, we could say, you know, not alien races, but, you know, you, you were accidentally left here by the gods who came from space, and there are other races of gods also, um, and so on. We don't have to use my exact words. We could kind of couch it in mythological religious terms. I don't know. Well, and that's kind of my intent is to guide them towards self-revelation. Um, I think with the, with the approach that Ceres takes is they by hey you need to learn technology you need to develop you need to join the gods among the stars um, eventually they will come to the realization if they follow that path that those among the stars the gods are no more than just races that no more knowledge than they currently have let's give them a copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and get out of here <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, of course, we're also talking exclusively about these heliopes that are... Whoever's talking right now, I can't hear you basically at all. Right? Most of the heliopes that, that are on the planet are still hunter-gatherers. Yeah, if you write yeah. mouse on Don Paulo's on TeamSpeak, you can up his volume. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was about to say that. Well done. Cerise... So I guess my modified approach is to do that deceptive re you know influencing their culture for their religion through those statements but I think uh, the first thing we have to do is go get to the tank secure the tank learn the tank um, 
so that then we have that behind us uh, and we have control of that before we make our statement. I agree with something. that. We could use yeah. more information, and if we get into the tank, who knows, maybe we can get some data from their computer banks or something. Uh, at least we'll know a little bit more what we're dealing with. Yeah, that's a good call. So I think that's what we should do now. Are we gonna uh, the go? The only thing I'm curious about is what Max has to say. Well, Max obviously wants to um, get the artifacts off the planet. Having said that, like most, um, practically all members of the the four races of, of the UPF, um, he's def deadly afraid of the Sapphire. Um, and what they could do, and if we can put a crimp in there, if we can put a crimp in, in their um, in their plans, he's up for that. Was um, Max? Did Max see sorry. the attack on the village? No, okay. no, he did not. Um, but I mean, the gen the standard the standard response from most UPF citizens, anything to do with the South R is is um, get away and report. Um, they're universally dangerous. They're like treat them like terrorists, you know, with a bomb strapped to their chest. You don't want to be around them, but if you've got no choice, you take the bastards out before they can take you out. Um, that's the general attitude amongst most of the, practically all of the UPF. I mean, don't forget yeah, it was only our attitude. Mm, it was only 80 years ago, a little over 80 years ago, that um, that the UPF was in a well didn't exist. The four races were in a war with um, the Sapphire um, and hence the UPF was formed you know uh, after that war um, because the Sapphire as I said uh, seemed to be intent on wiping out all non non Sapphire life apart from the allies which is interesting yeah well the thing is you know just whenever you find Sapphire you run away and report it but if we run away, we're leaving an entire species to die. Yeah. Oh, well, heroes such as yourselves, uh, or, you know, um, uh, are a cut above, a cut above the average citizen, you know. I mean, you, half of you proved that on Volturnus. I mean, you didn't have to stay and fight, except the fact that if you hadn't have, you probably would have died, but, you know, that's life. Or death. Well, you know, the other okay. thing to look at this is we... We capture sapphire technology that's valuable just like the ancient technology is. Uh, oh, that's true. has very little sapphire tech, so if we capture more of it... Yeah, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. So we could think of it as more money. So I say we <laughs> head back to the tank, learn the tank, uh, see if we can get any information out of the tank. If nothing happens, no new things, come morning, at sunrise, we make our announcements from the top of the pyramid about why the gods killed some of their priests and the direction they need to go in the future. And then we take the tank and we hunt the artifact. I can go with that. It's good to me. Yeah, the tank can hover, right? As in, it could hover above water? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the belief at this stage, yes. Okay. It should have no problems following the river across the lake to the to that area where it seems Provided the Yeah, provided the chop isn't too bad. Yeah. So heading back to the shore, is that what we're doing? Yes. Yep, the shore to the temple to break in to the tank. Alright, well, so you make it back to the shore okay. Um, again, as I said, um, there are a couple of young bucks on patrol, but they are patrolling the outer edge of the village, not looking inwards. Um, so you qu carefully and quietly make your way to the loose planks in the base of the pyramid that a couple of you used last time to get in. Um, and I'm assuming everybody's crawling in, is that right? Yep, I'm going yep. in. So, hang on. Ah, don't mind me.
me. Where the hell will I put that? Hey, Ryan, take off your headphones and see if you can hear the owl. We have an owl that likes to hang out on our roof and on our <laughs> nearby tree. Uh -huh. It's a big owl, too, probably 14 You know, I could hear it without the headphones. Well, with the headphones on. Oh. All right, so you climb into the um, you climb into the uh, uh, into the interior of the pyramid. Um, the uh, imposing imposing menacing bulk of the uh, the hover tank um, is uh, in front of you. What do you want to do? Uh, the hover tank map with the blueprint is in is blank now. Is there? It's blank. Yeah, for me it's blank. Yeah, me, me as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be point. You, you can't see any of that. Negative. I, nope. It, it's, yeah. it's all tan background, parchment background. Oh. When I expand it, it's uh, gray. It's all gray. Hang on, hang on, hang on. As if it wasn't yeah. revealed. That's interesting. I thought. I'm sorry. Uh. Um, I believe we found a um, port that the rod should fit in near the front ah, of the tank. Yeah, that's why. Okay, sorry. I haven't unmasked it. That's not what I want. No. Sorry about that, gentlemen. And when we do head out, guys, I don't know how many people the tank is going to fit. I would assume it's going to require at least five, a driver for plus four turret people. But we also have the Explorer, and the Explorer has a turret. Um, no, the Explorer Matt has a mount. to drive something. The Explorer has a pinfall mount. Yeah, with the uh, heavy turret. weight. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, can, you that on the top. Yeah, can you see that now? Negative. Can you see that now? No. You can't see. You might have to give it a new name. Our caches yeah. might be corrupt. Yeah, hang on a sec. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, it is resisting. Um, yeah, I don't look. So I'm, sorry, guys, I don't know what's going on here. I keep reaching. According to me, you guys can, can all all see this, all except one of you. Who is not getting it? Oh, you're just closing, closing it down. Yeah, when I fully expand it, it's just a gray map for me, as if it wasn't a map. No, I've definitely unmasked it. I've definitely unmasked it. And I renamed it as well. Yeah, I don't see anything. I just finished checking all the other images I have, and they all work. Mm, okay, hang on a sec. I'll do it this way. Ah. <sighs> image file yeah process of wonders of technology still not getting it guys no negative uh, hang on a sec I'll would do it, it a long show way. a loading screen possibly or would it just take 
time to load up because you do have a lot of stuff running right now. Yeah, maybe. It's not that big a map. Shouldn't take that long. I'll do this. Hang on. Yeah, exactly. Um, where am I? That's what I'm looking for. Dooby 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 doo. Images. Because we only have two drivers, which is Book and Cerise, so. But Max, Max is a pilot, so he's got to be a technician too. Uh, he's not a pilot. Oh. No, he's not a pilot, mate. He was like the... On his ship, I forgot what he was, but he was definitely not the pilot or the engineer. He was a nav. Yeah, I, okay, a nav. Let me look that up and see if he would have taken... Nope. I mean, when we go hunting the Sathar, I think we just take the tank, but when we go back to the ship, we'll have to split up with the Explorer and the tank. Alright, so there it is. Brand new file. Well, no, but you know, uh, let's resize it properly. He's really good with computers, but yeah, that's all Matts can do. So, in other words, Voke and Ceres are the only two drivers, and Voke cannot pilot the uh, hover tank because his technician's not high enough. There, now we got it. Perfect. Yeah. Way better. Um, yeah, no, it's a new map, that's why. I, yeah, but image. the when you first showed it to us, all the fight, uh, things overlapped yeah, and it looked it terrible. Was, yeah, I know, because it was a new image. It's a brand new image at my end. Um, so, that's why. Hey? Which image did you just talk about? The war tank. Uh, the uh, war map. tank. Image. The one that's labelled war tank, hover tank. Anyway, it's coming. Oh, I was looking at it earlier. It's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, uh, where were we talking about? Um, so I, th w well, we're we're in the pyramid, inside the pyramid, but the tank yes. has its defensive screen. Okay. I think we said near the front steps. There was a what we thought was a port for the rod to go in. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around, somewhere around there. If you're getting the arrow. Yeah, it was the, it was in the by the access hatch where the rod could go, right? Yeah, down the front there, before you actually get to the access hatch. Yeah, before you have to climb on the tank and get shot. Are you ready for us to move on, that? Oh, uh, if you guys can see things. Yeah, uh, so Boke is going to take the rod, and he's going to stick it in the hole. Alright, well, uh, when you uh, get near the hole, the little um, hatch cover, pop cover on the hole, um, slides across. Um, and um, yes, you insert the rod into the hole. The rod inserts about half its length. Um, and um, there was now that it's gone, you c you you realise there was a a, 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 a subaudible hum um, that is only really detectable once it's gone. Um, so you heard you heard the hum die away. Um, or even though you didn't know it was there in the first place until it actually went, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So are you pulling the the rod out? Uh, well, we I put it in, and the yeah. hump goes away. And yeah. if I, uh, uh, do we have? Mm, you know what? I'll touch the tank. I was going to say, the doc is about to volunteer, but if someone else is going to go first, <laughs> by all means. I don't think the doc should ever volunteer, personally. He's the doc. Yeah, yeah but he's, he's not a coward. He's just non-violent. Yeah, yeah, that's we'll fine. It's just the tank. Uh, the tank feels... It's a metal of some sort. It's... Um, yeah. 
so I just go feel metal. I don't. I don't feel anything out. No, you don't feel electric shock. Is that what you're asking about? Whew. All right. And what if I take the rod back out? With nobody uh, touching the tank. <laughs> yeah, no one touching <laughs> the tank. <laughs> nothing happens. Does the hum come back? No. Okay, well then I'll stick the rod back in. Okay, and the hum's back. So take I, it out you, What it if in. I turn the rod? Um, you, yeah, it, it spins in it spins in the hole, but not very easily. Every time you take put it in or out, you toggle the shield on or off. All right, so well I'll put it, out, it in put and it out one in. more time to toggle the shield on. Okay, so you take it out, put it back in, and the hum dies away. Now so take it out. Something we can push to. Yeah, now I'll take the rod out and... Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow down, slow down. Who was that in the background? That was Ben Bam. Um, you, Ben. Hey, is there any That's other right. kind of control? There's a button you can push or something? What's this? No shield? No, there's no button nearby. There's um, there's a the, there's uh, a hatch cover um, not too far up the, up the nose. Let me just move the arrow. Ah! There, underneath that barrel. Does it have like a crank or any way to any visible way to open it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's a there's a um a, a hatch wheel. Yeah, like a. Okay. Yeah. Well, when the shield's off, I'll try turning the hatch wheel. Okay, yeah. The hatch the hatch wheel opens, and you could probably lift the hatch up if you wanted. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, the there's a drop of a of a of a little over a meter or so, uh, and then there's a tunnel, um, leading um down towards the rear of the tank um, uh, after that drop. An access hatch, access tunnel basically. So we're on top of the ship, not on the bottom. Well you're on the, yeah, you're on, you're on there, you're, you're hang on, on the, uh, there. On, so yes, you have to climb up, you have to climb up on the, you have to climb up on the nose to get to the hatch at the top, uh, at the top there, where the purple arrow is. So those are steps going up to the access hatch. Yeah. Well, effectively. And then the access hatch drops into a tunnel that goes into the middle of the tank, and uh, yeah, yeah, down there. Oh, I see. Well, I see. on the top map, where it goes. The, on the top map, where the one is, that's the entrance. Yeah, to that's it. the hatch. Gotcha. Yeah, to the tunnel. Okay. It's an odd place for hatch, but whatever. Well, it's alien. <laughs> it's the answer. Right. <laughs> True. Um. Okay. Well, how tall is the tunnel? Uh, it's about a meter square. You 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 have to, um, we'll have to you have to go down hands and knees. Yeah, hmm. but it also it, which means one of two things. Um, it means the builders were very small, right? <laughs> or um, they were used to. I mean, it, it gives you an upper limit an upper limit for their size in terms of um, Cerise is going to have to crouch down the. Down the tunnel, so if they're the same size as a, uh, they could be much bigger than a than than a than a brusque. And how won't be a problem for Vogue. No, it won't be a problem for Vogue. Uh, and those five reported individuals that were balls, how big were they? Sorry, say again. The oh, species uh, were, that controls were, electricity. No, nah, they they wouldn't. They would. It would be too tight a fit for them. Okay. No, it's not them. I think they were a meter and a half diameter. Something like that, yeah. No, they, oh, okay. they, oh, they could probably squeeze their way down, but it'd be, you know, shoehorn and axle grease type squeezing. They'd certainly not build. You, you okay. certainly wouldn't build. You certainly wouldn't. If you built it, you wouldn't build it that small. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, Voke wants to start not touching all the buttons. Well, you're not, you're not there yet, Voke. It's at the moment you're, you're at the hatch. Voke uh, wants to go in. Tunnel. You want to go in, do you? I want to go, go in, in first, do you? Well. I was here first. <laughs> well, yeah, then you go answer. you go in first, unless you want All me right, to go well. in. Well, maybe I'll right, let Vogue go first because he's better <laughs> shaped, but I get to go second. <laughs> All right. So, okay, okay. So, long metal tunnel. Uh, it's about one meter high, one meter wide, as I said. The light, there's a light. It's soft and indirect. There's a ceiling opening about five meters ahead on the right and on the right, five minutes ahead on the right. Is 
that the bubble on top? What the hell? Yeah, no, don't worry about. It. Um, yeah, so it's about five meters, and then the, and then the tunnel. And then there's an opening. It, it, like, it looks like the tunnel goes up after about five meters, give or take. Oh, it goes up. Okay. Yeah, so it goes down, and at that point, uh, this is ex greatly, greatly exaggerated. Okay, I up. see. So then we kind of go in. So then we're kind of in this area. Yeah, you're probably somewhere on this map. If you're gonna come, if you're gonna go up, the, if you're gonna go up, thanks, Dave. If you're gonna go up, uh, so down the tunnel and up, like it's a U-shaped tunnel. Okay. Yeah, right. Down, so you along, go and back up again. Yeah, um, down, along, and then up again. Um, you come up in. Sorry. Right between the two side turrets. Yeah, roughly. Um, you come up this hatch. This, you, you pop out. There's a hatch that you have to open, which is that hatch there. I'm pointing at you on the on the top map. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Good. So it's shaped like a V. Yes, that's the one. It's shaped like a V. This room. Um, the ceiling's about two meters high. At the ends of the V, that would be there and below it, are two rounded, mushroom-like seats. Um, across the wall in front of the seats uh, is what you suspect is um, a glassy viewing screen. Um, all is dark at the moment. Uh, in front of the two seats are several simple levers uh, each lever has for its handle, in inverted commas, um, a narrow funnel depression, somewhat similar to the auto pistols you picked up from the priests. Um, something might be inserted into them, for example. Uh, also on the panels are horizontal bars almost flush with the facing and dials and indicators all dark, all not moving. Um, all are lettered or numbered, something, in an unfamiliar script. Um, at least that's what you suspect they are. Um, now, nothing is operating except a small red light on the left control panel that faces forward. At the opposite end of the room, right, is a sliding door which is open. That is, uh, no, there. Uh, and there's a hatch in the floor which you just come up. And it's just, okay? So there's a sliding door there, which is open. Okay, so like in between the two seats? Uh, no, sorry. There, across, okay. Yeah, across there. So um, there's also, as you can see, a another mushroom control panel there and one opposite so uh, what these ones do no idea but they're certainly not um, they're certainly not uh, they're, they're certainly of a different look feel to the two front ones what's everybody else doing I'll go in if there's room and I want to start taking pictures video Whatever, start recording as much as I can. Yeah, okay. Go into, start looking around, and okay. then start analyzing things for cause. Yeah, just waiting for the A-OK. -okay. Folks yeah, will start Babu's taking notes. Wait up by the hatch. Right. Just in case well, anything uh, follows us in here by chance. Yeah. All right. Well, Babu, can you give me a um a, a spot check, please? Uh, search type thing? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Um, Babu, because you didn't go in uh, and you're waiting by the main hatch, you note that there is on that front turret, this one here, uh, that one there, there's um, a small hatch on it. Yeah, I might pick my interest. I might just 
watch in the hatch and then go up and examine that hatch too. Well, the hatch on the turret, are you opening it up? Yeah, one on the top front. All right, it's a tight squeeze. You're pretty sure Cerise wouldn't be able to fit, but everybody else should. Um, inside is a, a single padded round seat in front of a small control panel. The walls are very close and packed with machinery, uh, but you can. But it looks like the dome is transparent. I might have found a new toy to play with. <laughs> Oops. So there's a dome around the turret. No, the dome on the turret. The turret dome itself. Oh. Okay. Is is see-through from the inside. Huh. So on the outside it appears to be like regular metal. Yes, it does. Huh. Although you're, although you're not there, I shouldn't be telling you that. Ah! I'll go ahead and tell everybody about it then to the comms. So Babu's voice comes out over the radio and he says, I found something! And he tells you about this about this hatch into this front turret and how the, there's a seat in there and the dome is see-through from the inside. See if all the turrets have hatches. I'm curious as to if the turrets have to be manned from inside the turret or from inside here. I was trying to figure out the different yeah, control like stations. Is there a access from the turret into the ship? Mm -hmm. That does not appear to be. It's way too small. I mean, looking at the inside setup. Yeah. Two pilots or a pilot and a commander, two gunners. And whatever's in that, whatever's through and that door. The other three, which is a strange number. You would well, think yeah, well, you don't, you, well, well, you don't know what's through that door. All right, technically. What you I mean on in five? Yeah, I mean, I mean in four. I thought you said that door was open. Oh, it is too. Sorry, my fault. Sorry, that is open. That was, sorry, me going nuts. And I think I've just blanked out the entire map again. Yeah, we'll yeah. never see it again. <laughs> Indeed, unidentified image. I forgot where that red light was. Was that in the first few consoles? Uh, the yeah. red light was uh, on the left-hand front console. Oh. Let me turn that off. So let me turn that off and lock that off so I don't accidentally turn that on again. Oh, I can't draw on it now. Bugger. There's a flaw for you in the system. So, yeah. So, um, are you going to the other turrets, Babu? Yeah, I could do that. I'm not really yes. interested in that one, number seven, uh, up top. I guess they're all numbered seven, but uh, one. They're all numbered the seven, bottom. dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just noticed that. And hey, if Jazz is still outside, ask Jazz if um, the weapons are all beam weapons or if there's any projectile or rocket turrets. Sure, I'll give you that in a moment. Um, yeah. Checking out the turrets, uh, I'll, get, I'll get back to inside in a second. Um, the front turret, um, by the way, I put up some alien take notes in the note. It's public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not, I, 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 J uh, Jazz isn't sure. It seems to be a larger version of a gamma gun. Um, but that's pure speculation on his part. Mind you, informed speculation maybe, but still speculation. Uh, the two side turrets um, appear to be rocket launchers. Appear to be rocket armed with rocket launchers, or some sort of projectile launcher, anyway. The two uh, on the side. Yeah, the two side turrets, right. and the rear turret. Uh, the no. Uh, that appears to be a, some sort of beam weapon. Is Jazz's um, estimation? 
and yes all four turrets have um, an, a small access hatch did we ever learn what number six was uh, that's a hatch of some sort But you know, you don't think it's an access hatch; it's some sort of other hatch, hatch for some hatch for other purpose. I would guess engine, but no, maybe, no, well, maybe you don't know. Anyway, um, so um, if you're inside the if you're inside the 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 the, the tank, um, you're looking at possibly um, pilot commander weapon stations and maybe an engineering station? Yeah, I was thinking four weapon stations, right? I mean, there's four turrets and then an engineer. Um, mm. so, so the room the, the room four is shaped like a, la like a letter C. Um, so along one wall along one wall are three mushroom-like seats and there's a hatch in the floor. Uh, over the hatch is a control panel, but there's no seat. Along the opposite wall are a, is a seat in front of a control panel, a large, what appears to be a computer set in a block of machinery, and then another seat. Do the... Uh, so sorry, sorry, sorry. In the center of the ceiling is a second hatch, which is closed. And there is a sliding door shut at the far end of the room. Okay. Right. So the door uh, between four and five is shut. So um, looking at the control panels, do they yeah. appear to be matched any? So, for instance, the front two ones probably look to be mostly identical to each other. The, the second set, I'm assuming, seem to be a... Uh, Hang on a second. Um, yeah, the two, the two, the 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 those two, and the one above it, uh, appear very very similar, if not the same. Yes, thank you. Um, but but that these two appear pretty similar to the first two I just pointed out. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. This one, the panel in front of that, the, the buttons appear to be, the uh, buttons in slider, they appear to be different. Um, and the panel without the seat opposite appears to be um, uh, completely different again. So where's this supposed engineering station? I bet you That's it's that one there. That one? Because it's unique. And it's near the back. Yeah. I'm guessing these four... So Does Max have an opinion on the engineering station, seeing as he's an engineer? No, he's a navigator. He's an astrogator. Yeah, I know the four you mean. Yeah. Um, really Max doesn't that. have much of an opinion, and in fact, Max Max is not Max is a bit of a um. Max is not a combat. Max is not a soldier. At all. Um, he he's way out of his depth with all this. Um, he'll back you guys up, but Jalasites have a word for that. <laughs> um, he'll back you guys up, but he certainly not won't be taking the lead on any of this. You know, he can help out, but he won't. He doesn't know enough to be able to be useful in that regard by himself. Volk, why don't you go check out the back? I think the yeah, Volk door will to uh, try to see if he can't get through the sliding door. So you approach the sliding door, and what do you do? Uh, I look for any way to open it. There are no buttons. 
there are no handles or anything else like that. He touches it. Do you touch it? I touch it. Mm, well, someone else, someone else said you touched it, and I thought, that's not fair on you if you don't want to do it. Well, the I'll, I'll, touch the cla I'll touch the door. Okay. The door slides across. Opens. The room beyond is square. The walls are irregular. So the room is square, but the walls are irregular. There are many niches, and that formed by sealed machinery. Uh, lights blink on and off, and there are dials and gauges, but no chairs or anything that resembles a control panel. In one wall, there is a sealed hatch. Near its handle is a small hole. Like the control rod hole? Could be. Cerise is going to go back up to the front left control panel and not touching the red button, but she's going to start figuring out uh, controls. The red blinking light. Uh, not a red button, red blinking light. So you're in the you're in the left hand left hand left hand seat, are you? Yes. All right, that is the okay. Um, uh, do you have any? Do you think you have any relevant skills? Yeah, operate vehicle, right? As a technician. Okay, I'll give you an operate. I'll, I'll give you an operate vehicle role if you wish. Well, it is alien design, but this appears to be the commander's position on the tank. Uh, you would estimate that um, the uh, most of the controls here are secondary controls to take over if uh, something else goes wrong, and also supervisory um, oversight of all the other positions. Got you, Doc. And uh, what did you say about the room that Voke entered with the irregular walls? It had like a hole that you could put the rod into, and what else? Yeah, against 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 the back wall, there's a hole, um, which Cerise surmises is the same as an access hole for the rod. Apart from that, um, there are lights blinking on and off. Um, the room is square but irregular because of all the machinery um, around the edges. Um, there's no chair or anywhere si or anywhere that resembles a control panel in this room. And while you're pe while people are thinking, the chairs you said are mushroom shaped, so they they would probably it sounds like they're like a brusque chair, except brusque chairs are typically oblong. Yeah. Yeah, there's a resem there's a distinct resemblance to to brusque furniture, but it's it's also distinctively alien as well. Right. So they're they're not bipeds, they're multipeds probably. Well, yeah, well, you're a, you're a decapeds, a decapod, so mm -hmm. Yeah. Focus uh it could be Focus gonna it could be. take the rod and stick it into the hole in the back. All right. Again, you didn't realize it, but now that it's gone, there was a, a hum coming from that back wall that's now disappeared. Good thing you didn't stick your tongue in there. Yeah, good thing I didn't touch it. Okay, so the back wall is in the regular wall in the back room? The back where the green arrow is, well, that appears to be some sort of hatch, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, I will attempt to open the hatch. How? I'll touch it. It slides across. What do you know? I uh, can't believe it. What do you know? Mm. The room beyond me measures about two meters by three. In its center is a bright yellow rocket with silver nose and guidance fins. The rocket launches. Uh, sorry, the rocket rests on a launch rail. 
There are numerous monitoring panels around the room, but only one control panel. On this panel are a large dial and a bright yellow button. The dial appears to have five positions, and the pointer on the dial points to the first position. Okay, so this seems like a weapons control room. Yeah, probably. Hmm. So one to five. Mm. Yeah, don't touch the button. <laughs> don't, don't well, what if I just button. touch the dial? Yeah, no, I'd leave it alone. You might get Jazz in here to analyze it, see if he can tell what type of missile or warhead it is. Or maybe the capabilities, the range of it. Alright. That would be a military type thing. Uh, and then Volk will go to the, what is probably the engineering station, right? There, and can I do an engineering check to see if he can figure something out about it? Certainly can. What would that be? Mechanical? Military? Um, well, um, well, um, we'll start with military because it's a tank. Although military engineering technically is um, bunkers and things like that, but no, we'll start there. All right, um, yes, you definitely got an engineering, it's definitely the engineering position that you have worked out. Yeah. And the engineering position appears to control, you would expect, um, all the power and that for for the for the for the tank itself. Um, what other engineering skills do you have? Do you what w w do you wish to use? Um, mechanical, alternate energies, nuclear. Well, something like this is something like this, something this this size would require a lot of energy. Um, so you need you, your engineering knowledge would tell you that you would need a small, compact, highly powerful energy source. The best, apart from uh, uh, the best example of that that you know of, would be nuclear, because um, you didn't spot anything that looked like solar panels on the outside of the tank, and you doubt it'd be wind powered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, geo yeah, I geothermal. Could be powered by solar. <laughs> Geothermal, possibly, but uh, that's unlikely for a tank. Yeah, so... so nuclear, maybe? Oh, man. Oh, is no there luck today. Anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, a little bit of logic tells you, yeah, look, you're almost certain it is nuclear. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Whatever it... What, if it is a nuclear-based, um, it'd have to be way more powerful than anything the UPF has got. Because it's way, way small. So, in other words, they've made a compact nuclear reactor that is more powerful than anything we have? That would be your guess. Maybe something like cold fusion or something? Not about cold fusion, but certainly, very, but certainly highly efficient fusion. Hmm. Oh, you can imagine what some of that... You can imagine what... You, you imagine what some of the um, some of the um, megacorps would pay for something like that, let oh, alone yeah. the UPF. Yeah. Can I try to <laughs> blow up the ship? No, no sorry. Uh... No, figure out what the buttons do without blowing everything up. You can attempt to. I oh, well, that that's a logic roll, please. And I'll give you a bit of a bonus because you are using you are a natural engineer. <laughs> yeah. Uh Ow. look no. Um Yeah, no, nah, sorry, no. At least I didn't blow yeah, it up. Yeah, you didn't blow it up, no. If, wow. Um time permitting, I don't know how long it's gonna take. But Ceres will go around to the various stations, dr what she assumes is the driver's station next, and then to which the... Which is... Okay, well, which one do you assume is the driver's station? Okay, so um, 
you've got operate machinery so give me an operate machinery roll yep that's that is definitely the uh, the driver station as you suspected um, you're pretty sure um, you can control uh, forward back uh, lift and um, and that from a couple of buttons on the um, on the control panel um, yeah Um, maybe Cat wants to use some computer skills. Yeah, if somebody's oh, no, calling Kat out you? to me, <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. uh, if somebody's called out to me, uh, she's currently waiting outside because it looked pretty cramped in there. But if someone's calling out, then I can go in and have a look. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Same I don't want to be the only one doing okay. stuff investigation here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bim Bam's looking around too, and I mean. Maybe if we all looked at each thing at the same time, you know, and said, tried to decipher what the buttons meant all together, we might have better luck. Um, also, I'm going to compare some of the symbols on the outside of the ship with the symbols under the panels. I'm guessing the ones on the outside might be numbers. Um, so I'll start trying to make some crude things on my handheld computer about, you know, which symbol might be which number and so on. Yeah, so basic, yeah. Okay, a basic idea. I wonder what yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cat, which, where, which, where, what were you, si where were you sitting when you made that roll, Cat? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I'd be going up to Cerise and the driver's one that she uh, okay. called me. Yeah, over. Well, yeah. Well, you definitely, definitely, the, you definitely between the the two of you, reckon you could fly this thing now, or operate this thing now. How well is yeah. another question, but you certainly, you certainly reckon you, you could, you could, you could get it moving. Yeah. So this one's the commander. The one below that is the driver. Um, Jazz probably wants to come in and look at the weapon systems, but I don't really know what skill that would be on his behalf. Um, he's obviously a military person, but yeah, no, it would be a logic role. A logic role. And, yep. I, and I would give, and I'm going to give him a bonus because he's a military person. Actually, it's a logic role for all of you. Unless you have a direct, direct skill, uh, in uh, in which case you can use the direct skill. But I'm going to give you a bonus for your bits and pieces. So, so okay. So where was Jazz and where was Pedro when those rolls were made? Uh, Jazz would have been down in the uh, the thing that Vox suspects as the weapons control, the thing with the that dial one. of one to five. Oh, oh in, the the missile. in the missile room. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No, you got no. Jazz has got no idea. Yeah. Um, okay. What sorry. about range? Oh, hang on. What would the? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No. No idea. He's got no idea. Where was Pedro when he made that roll, Ped? Yeah, I'm more interested in non-violent ones, so I'll point at it. Do any of us have anything that can record images and videos and stuff? Like four. Yeah, mate. Uh, I haven't got any video recording stuff. Well, three said he was recording things as you went along. Yeah, but somebody, we were talking about whether the stuff we have can record or not. Can a Chronotron record or? No, nah, it's just a watch. Yeah. So do we have any handheld computers or devices that can record? Yes, we do. I think Cat's body okay. comp, right? Yeah, Cat's body yeah. comp. Right, well, let's body try comp. and take as much video as we can. Mm -hmm. um, that, that one there, Doc. Yeah? Yeah. All right, that is... You managed to work out. Oops, wrong way. That one... Uh, that appears to be the interior control for the front for the front turret and you reckon you know how to operate it that one there that one there there's turret control here but so that one is for turret number one got it well the front turret well Probably the turrets won't work until we turn the thing on. There's that one red button that's lit up in the front. 
I'm guessing it might be a power button. Maybe we should just push it's it. It's not a button. It's a light. Oh. It's a flashing light. Oh, hmm. Okay. Uh, a dummy light. Uh, does it say your tire pressure is low or check engine? Hmm. Something like that. Um, Cerise knows how to turn the, shi turn the ship on. Uh, that was decided by... That was, that was on the command commander's... Uh, the commander's um, console. Yeah, I just didn't think we should Hasn't turn it, it on until we know as much as we can know about it. Um, if folk touches, like, uh, where the door, like, the sides of the doors and the hatches, do the doors and hatches close? Uh, the, well, not the, the sliding doors do, yes. And the hatch that leads to the control room, if I kind of touch be right below the hatch, does it close? Which hatch? Uh, the one, uh, like, for number six on the inside with the missile. No, that, that's a, that's a doorway, mate. Sorry, I misspoke. Oh, doorway, okay. Yeah. So, all the doorways, if you just touch to the side of them, they will open or close? Yes. Okay, got it. Although there's no, there's no obvious place to touch. There's no obviously, obvious panel. It's just, you know, at a roundabout sh shoulder height, roughly. That's Very unusual. really engineer. bad C. What is there? Yeah. By the three. I'm trying to mark things. So F for the front turret, C for the commander, D for the driver. I think we figured out the engineering. Yeah, it doesn't draw well, does it? Now, you haven't worked out the engineering yet. You just know it is the engineering. Yeah, I, oh. I haven't figured it out yet. Okay. So, where else are you going to go? And what else are you going to do, guys? And, Babu, are you still uh, outside checking out the turrets, or not? Are you, have you come yeah. outside now? Yeah, Good I'm just folk. out there, kind of, you know, sitting probably where I put my circle, just watching things. Okay. Then Cerise is going to go panel to panel and, tr and try to figure out each one. She'll go to this one next. All right, well, that's a logic roll, mate, please. Yeah... It's one of the turrets, but you're not sure which one. Okay, the one south of that. Again, it's one of the turrets, but you're not sure which one. Folk will All come right. take a look and at both of them. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs to try to figure them out. Jesus yeah, you got Christ, no my idea, folks. <laughs> my rolls are just... Ow. So far, so far, the pacifist dock has worked out how to shoot... How to operate a turret, but no one else has. Okay, yeah. well, not when he operates in. the turret, does it go back and forth? Or? Well, it would do. He thinks it would do. If the power uh, is if, pa if the power is turned on. Well, uh, it also goes. It, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying the, the, it also um, extends up on an. It appears to extend up on an arm as well. To give you a complete 360 degree f uh, field of fire. Plus an elevation of about 45 degrees. So there's yeah. another operate roll for, I'm guessing, the rear turret? Uh, yeah, that one is the rear turret. Yes, correct. Again, like uh, you're pretty sure it, um, when it's in operation, it extends, uh, that the turret extends up ab above the tank to give a complete 360 degree field of fire. Oh, that the seat rises above? Now, not the seat, the turret itself. Oh. On an arm, on an extension arm. So you guys have identified that all these turrets are operated from inside. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Apparently it's redundant, right? Well, because you can take off the turrets. It would appear as if you could take the turrets off. Or is that because of the arm? It's because of the arm. Could Volk try a technician operate on the um, engineering? He could. It will try. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no. Why am I I'll see so if hot? I can figure it out. Yeah, Look, yeah, you 
you reckon you could you reckon you could uh, it's definitely a, an engineering station it's definitely for, to monitor the power and uh and, and everything else um and it's pretty you're pretty sure it's nuclear in fact you're almost certain it's nuclear um See, this one looks and, like temperature Do you want to show Voke how to do it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, hopefully okay. everybody is, or at least several people are around and discussing and... Yeah, I hope everybody's hearing it. Yeah, uh, if you look in notes, I've been putting some notes Making together. Notes. Yeah, okay. So, yes, uh, once once one of you has learnt how to do it, it makes teaching the other one, the others, uh, relatively easy. Okay? Um... Cat would like to investigate this flashing light and figure out what it may be. Uh, I don't think what anybody skill would you like to use? I was just going to do a straight logic roll. Okay. You don't you don't have any other skills you think you would would help? Well, I mean, it could be operate computer, but it's a it's a flashing light, so it's not really a computer, <laughs> I don't think. So. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, I did that. Cerise figure that out when she figured out that station? No. No, she figured out the station, but okay. not the light. Sorry. Um, okay, it's either an indicator indicator that the, the ship does have power, does have fuel, and can operate, or it's something else. Like a direct or communicate? No, it's not a comms unit. It, it's more on the lines, considering where it is, um, it's probably if it's not fuel indication or power indication, it could be some sort of security um, indicator. Yeah, um, that's maybe. what I was just thinking. The little flashing red lights on the cars, right? Yeah, I mean it could be something like that. But I mean, if that was the case, I mean you got in through the security screens, both of them, in the end, because uh, there was one on the missile. Remember. Yeah, so is that a um, missile control room, or...? Appears to be. Does one of these turrets launch missiles? Mm, does not appear to No, it, co it comes out of its own hatch. Number six oh. on the top view. Number six? Yeah. Oh, we think that's... That, we... Okay. Can yeah, we so it has they're... four turrets and a missile launcher. Can we tell if they're air... ground air, or...? Ground to ground missiles. It, uh, it appears to be. It's big enough. It's a, it's a ground to ground. It's <laughs> semi ballistic, actually. It's possible it's these nuclear are nuclear warheads. Right. It's very possible that those are nuclear warheads. So somebody needs to figure out the left and right turrets, since they're a matching pair. They're of stations, and those are the two turrets we don't know yet. And then the other question I have, Matt, is where those two hatches lead. Do they both lead down? Do they are they escape hatches? Are they engineering hatches? Uh, you mean sorry, that hatch and that hatch. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, the uh, the one it's pointing to actually leads up. Uh, and the one in the middle, no, sorry, the one the, that one leads down. The one in the middle, of the one in the middle of the room leads up. Okay, let's open them and see where they go. Sorry, cat, you're not successful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> mm. So, which one are you opening? Sorry. Uh, the one that leads up. One that leads up. Um, opening that up, it doesn't go very far. It, it, it leads into a very cramped crawl space. Um, above, above the control room, but he's still inside the tank and below the turret, below that top turret. Um, it appears to be an, uh, some sort of maintenance access hatchway. A okay. what access hatchway? Maintenance, maintenance access. Oh. For maintenance workers. So we figured out the controls for the middle turret. I don't imagine the ones for the side turrets would be all that much different. I mean. Why would they come up with a completely different system? No, that's different true, but types. nobody, but nobody's worked it out yet. Well, Bim Bam's going to go to one of the side turrets and see if he can figure it out after okay. finding out how to work the center one. Okay. Do you need a logic roll or something? Yes, please. I need a logic roll. Uh, oh, 
Oh, that's possible. yeah, no, that's that's good. <laughs> yes, um, Correct. yes, you have managed to work out the um, left hand side turret, um, and as you said, you're pretty sure it's some sort of rocket launching turret. Um, how many rockets there are, I'm not sure, but there's um, probably enough for you know the magazine is pretty well, you know. Um, we need to figure out how to turn before. this thing on before we can discover much else. Uh, oh, you know how to turn it on. Yeah. Uh, oh, we do. Okay. Boke is gonna try to see if he can't figure out the missile control room. Okay. Give me a, give me a, yeah, you didn't have, that was jazz. Um, what about that other turret? What about that other, um, that other, um, hatch in the floor? Yeah, I'll go there next. Okay. Um, that leads down into a missile magazine. Um, oh, like the big missiles? No, the rockets, mi the tur side turret missiles, you suspect. Cool. How full does it seem? Uh, it seems pretty full from what you're standing at. Um, how many rounds? Good question. Um, quite a few. Um, does it? Probably... Probably three, four dozen. It's hard to tell. It's pretty cramped and pretty hard to see. Come on, folks. Yeah, we got four better than that, my man. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Dan? Jazz can Dan? go down there and count them. No, you, no it's too, it goes back to... It's semi-automated, as you'd expect. Um, it's hard to see, but... Um, yeah, there's... 30, 40 odd, maybe more. I take it Voke isn't able to figure out the missile. Well, the the missile. There's only one. The, yeah, the missile. Um, look, you're pretty sure that the dial has something to do uh, with the range, and the uh, button uh, is probably the launch button. And the um, series of series of buttons clumped together would be some sort of targeting uh, targeting com control panel thing, but there's nothing. There's no screen flip, so it's hard to tell. Okay, so I can't tell while launch. the ship is off, while yeah. the tank is off. Well, no. Voke will go down the... Not, uh, not, with, not with that roll. <laughs> Voke will uh, go down that one hatch that didn't go to the missile magazine, to the rocket magazine. And it see what's... Went up. Oh, went that up. one that goes up. We'll see what, what that one... Yeah, where it it's maintenance a maintenance hatch. hatch. Yeah, where does yeah, it... it's a maintenance hatch. He'll go through it. He'll go through it and see where it goes. Uh, in, into this area above the control uh, above the, uh, the the main habitation part of the tank uh, but doesn't do anything it doesn't go anywhere it's just an access hatch for maintenance purposes okay so there's just machinery all about when I go in machineries electronics yeah I don't think okay then hold it I was hoping to find how many nuclear warheads we have <laughs> uh, I bet you just none of if it's nuclear at all I mean, come on. <laughs> They're going to have nuclear warheads. Are they? Okay. Do we still need to figure out the right turret? Right, well, you really fission should. as opposed to fusion, right? You really should. I don't should. know if I tried yet or not. No, you haven't. Yeah, no, nah, that's... Yeah, look, you... Yeah. Um, That's a rocket launching turret for the uh, right-hand side, and yeah, you can... Fire on the sh fire on the t on the tank if you really want it. <laughs> Any idea what the range is on them? Uh, good question. Uh, the range is um probably round about. Thousand meters at its ext mass extreme. Okay. Did we figure out what the that the front turret is indeed a gamma ray weapon? 
Uh, yeah, look, it's pretty much certain it is. And um, the rear one's a laser beam? Some sort of beam weapon, probably a laser, yes. Oh, it's yeah, ridiculous. Okay, what's that one? Um, different ranges, of course. Well, uh, Voke, you should close the hatch to the um, missile room. Yeah. Missile. Well, the door. Yeah, we don't want that open when the uh, it goes off. Yeah, there looks like there's a hole oh, in no, that yeah, room. Oh no, it'd, it'd probably launch. Yeah, it's a, ha it's a hatch in the roof. Oh, can I go that. through the hatch? No, because there's a missile on the road. <laughs> Wait, so there's a missile loaded in that hatch? Yes. Uh, yellow can't take it out. Yellow is silver. It's no, you can't take it out. But I want think of a missile silo. Yeah. It has a hatch over the top of it, and a missile sits there. Oh, so in other words, when I, if you launch it from the missile control room, it goes up right behind you. Yes. Yes. As in, there's you unprotected space from no, no, you no, and no, the no, missile. No, no. No, no, the missile's protected. You're protected from the missile exhaust, if that's what you're worried about. Well, okay, so so the hatch is above me then, right? If yeah, it even has exhaust, oh, okay. it could be kinetically launched. That yes. too. So does it seem like that's where I would go to reload it? After it fires, the hatch could open, and then I put a new missile there in, close the hatch? Seem, yeah, possibly, but... Okay. Um, it's probably a one-shot... As far as you guys are concerned, it's probably a one-shot weapon. And you still haven't worked out what it does. Or how to launch Blow it properly. shit up. Yeah, well... And just for yeah. clarification, we're talking about Area 5-6? We're yes. talking about Area... Well, Area 6 in particular. Yeah. Five's the engineering room, looks like. Six is, a, is missile control. Yeah, Volk will do a logic check in the engineering room. Yeah, I'll join him. God damn it! Ah. So much for an, our engineer. Yeah, Doc's working things out perfectly. Yeah, it's definitely an engineering room. Um, there's definitely power. It's just a matter of basically, you know, hitting the hitting the ignition key, uh, and the tank should work. From what you can gather, uh, Doc, um, whatever the fuel source is, and the the general consensus seems to be some sort of nuclear. Um, you've got enough fuel for a long while. But the, the, the tank's obviously on standby at the moment. And most of the um, mo most energy drain over the last X number of years has been the uh, defence screens. Nicely said. Oh, that reminds me. Um, you guys can each have two experience points for your adventures on this planet so far. Woo woo! Cool. I should have given you those a little bit earlier. A little bit later, yeah, earlier. So sorry about that. So. The gamma, the, the the gamma gun, or what you're calling a gamma gun, has probably got a range, a maximum range of five clicks. Uh, the rockets have probably got a maximum range of about a thousand meters. Uh, the beam weapon, which the more you, the more Jazz looks at it, the more he suspects it's some sort of heavy laser. Um, ha has a range of up to two kilometers. Um, the Missiles, anything you haven't got, you haven't worked out properly yet. Um, you're pretty sure you know how to drive, maybe not well, but certainly drive, and you've worked out how to keep the keep the tank running, engineering-wise, um, barring any major accidents like I don't know, getting shot at. Um, the so I guess I can take a look at the missile. Um, the other thing is if Cat wants to, when we're ready to power up, because that's probably a non-reversible thing, um, if Cat wants to sit in the commander's chair and see what she can learn from the computer, it might have a database, I, I don't know. 
Oh, uh, what was the ranges on the weapons again? Well, it's only speculation at this, at this point, but Jazz reckons the... Excellent, I'll give you that in a minute. I'll give you that in a minute, um, Cerise. The gamma gun's up to maybe 5,000 5, metres. Um, the, rocket, the, 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 the rocket turret's maybe 1,000 metres. And the, uh, the beam weapon or whatever it is, maybe up to 2,000 metres. That's awesome range on the Gamma Gun. So these guys, we, we basically figured out how these turrets should work once they get power. Yep. At least from the inside. Um, well, but we would like to check out that Gamma turret from the outside looking in and see if there are kind of like controls on it. You know, okay joystick whatever it is they use to move it yeah there is there's a joystick and a lever and a button on the end of the joystick basically oh okay <laughs> but you still need to work out how to work it well, so yeah, a logic yeah. a logic role please oh, i'll do that oh oh oh, oh, oh. Yeah. okay that's like the video game i had back home yeah pretty much um, the lever would ex the lever extends extends the uh, the turret on a um, on its on its arm, uh, and the joystick gives you um, 360 degree control and up to 45 degrees worth of elevation. Um, um, you suspect a crosshairs would appear on the dome where you're pointing um, the 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 the, the uh, gamma gun. And of course, the firing button on top of the joystick probably fires it. So you could control that turret manually if you wanted to from the turret. Sweet. Is that any different than the controls inside? Yes, the controls inside do not control do not have a joystick or, um, or or lever. They've just basically got buttons. Any idea which would be easier to use in combat? Pretty much, but much just really. Well, uh, do we want to power it on? Yeah, let's do that. Do we one thing you do the, the one thing you do want to note, the one thing you do want to do note though, is that uh, all the turrets are computer assisted. They have to be. It's the only way this thing, something like this would work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blue's going to settle into his turret. Are you? Okay. So it's possible that each turret needs two people to punch. I doubt that. I think you could do it either. Because we we found firing, but it's just buttons on the inside panels. I'm not yeah. sure why they do both Could internal be. and external. Maybe the turrets are. Maybe they can be unmounted from the tank. Any idea? Can we tell? If, if no, the, you, you don't think they can be dismounted from the tank. Um, but they do. Ex they do extend on an arm up from the tank to went to operate. That's what gives them their their complete three sixty degree firing arcs. Because they can. Right. They can. Yeah. Cause Any if you reason look at it, why we think look there's at two sets of controls for each turret? Redundancy. I mean, the I mean the the commander can drive the tank as well. Yeah, there's a second secondary right. controls to drive the tank, and it also appears that there's a there's a, a tertiary or a secondary set of driving controls on the engineering station. So the engineer could take over and drive the tank possibly in the in the event of a, an emergency. So I think we're ready to power it up. But just before you do, if you look at the side view of the tank, you see how that side turret is below the below the 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 central spine. Yeah. yeah well, as I said, it's got when it's in operation, it appears that that, that 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 extends on an arm, so you get a complete 360 degree fire up above that central ridge. Yep. Uh, same with the front turret, and same with the the back turret. Oh yeah, and what's the bubble on the top? What does that appear to be? 
Uh, which bubble on the top? The green one. That's that one. The circle. Yeah, that one right oh, that's, there. That's that's this that's this where the, you guys are the crew the crew crew compartment. Oh, okay. That's the crew compartment. That's this bubble here. Got. It. Yeah, and that's that where the green one is, and that's so that'd be a part of the crew compartment. So, anyone else have so any yeah. other questions before we powered up? So the missile. Make sure that we're not going to blow the thing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still the minus thirty-five <laughs> on the missile. Yeah, I uh, just want to clarify what the mm. one is here on the bottom center middle there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's the engineering space. That's the engineering station. And it looks like secondary driving control. Okay, I thought well, backup that driving five control. was engineering. Well, now, if five's the engineering room, five's the engineering room, that's the engineering station. Yeah, the station seems to be able to monitor the ship's systems and power and so forth. While the engineering yeah. room is probably where you can access the engine and so forth. Okay, I'm satisfied. Yeah? Uh, the missile, it appears to not be a nuclear missile. It appears to be an EMP missile. Ooh. Uh, it appears to have a range um, out to five kilometers. Uh, you are unsure of its blast radius. It's got to be at least half a kilometer, if not one or two or three kilometers. I don't know. So the dial seems to seems to uh, give you uh, your 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 range. Uh, the range of the blast or range of the missile. Range of the missile. Okay. Uh, if you dial up the range of the up. missile, do you also dial up the damage it does? Good question. Unknown. Let's hope you uh, set it up smartly enough so that if you launch a missile at minimum range, the, you're still outside the blast radius. <laughs> oh, I can see. Mm. It's very possible that the tank is immune to the missile. Hmm, maybe. Um, the uh, the um, targeting uh, the targeting buttons you suspect uh, would give a direction, and of course the launch button. Launches. Do we think right now that it's set at minimum range or maximum range? Well, it's all the way to the, it's, it's all the way um, Wittishins. It's all the way anti-clockwise at the moment, uh, which for you guys is generally the off position or the the yeah um, the low position. Okay, so. It's probably close range. Yeah, uh, I'd be tempted to set it to middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, you set it to middle if you want. Sure, I'll set it to the middle. Okay. I mean, we'd have to have a target first, but yeah. Uh, power it Do up? Do we want to wait till dawn to power up? Do we want to power up in the middle well, of the night? You're not, you're not too far from dawn now. This has taken a couple of hours to get all this done. You know, I know we've we've moved it through pretty quickly with a few dice rolls but you guys have been studying this stuff and and trying to work it out and it's not just you know it's you've spent several hours doing this right right no absolutely babu are you still you, you are you sealing yourself into your turret or you no, not just settled into my turret yeah i'll stay in one of the turrets too bim bam will which which one do you want to go to bim bam i guess the right you're going to settle yourself. So you live, you're going to crawl out of the tank and then move across the top of the tank and, and go in the hatch of um, the right-hand turret. Is that right? Oh, you can't get to the turrets from inside the tank? Nope. Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Or do you want to take the back laser turret? Um, Whichever one you guys want me to do, I'll take the back laser turret. I'm just thinking that the rockets have the shortest range. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I'll take the laser turret. We probably want to conserve rockets where possible. We don't probably will yes, never be able to get right. any more. <laughs> Refrain on the rockets. All right, I'll take the All laser right, so turret. All right, when you get in the when you get in there, 
give me a logic roll just to make sure you understand how to control it via these controls because they're different from the controls from inside yes okay yes you are you you, you do ha you have worked it out yeah um, you're pretty sure you do this it'll do that yeah so good now you two don't square off against each other and start shooting each other it is possible to do that <laughs> no, I don't think so because oh. uh, the, the rear turret's mounted higher than the front turret and all, all the turrets that and they, they all, all go up on arms and they all extend up on arms and you can <laughs> shoot at each other <laughs> okay. Well, I could also shoot the tail off if I wanted to. You could. Well, no, there's probably a probably a gimbal system to prevent that, like on World War II planes. Yeah, I wouldn't test it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to test it. But, well, I could test it by swinging the turret around and not pulling the trigger, but yeah. Well, I'm sure it lets you swing through the arc. If anything, the computer would prevent you from yeah. firing while you're at that position. No, it probably just doesn't let the turret depress far enough in the back to uh, to shoot at it. That's a simple mechanical way to do it. So All right, so 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 let me get this straight. Bim Bam's in the rear turret, Babu's in the front turret. Last I heard, Cat was going to be in the commander's seat. Is that right? That's my suggestion. We haven't heard yeah. from Cat. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. that's fine. All right, where are you going, Cerise? Driver's seat. Doc? I'll stand behind the two in the front. Do you want to take one of the left or right? Oh, you don't fire. Turret, what? The Doc refused. He will not go anywhere near one of those turrets. All right, Jazz, where are you? Uh, he'll jump on one of the uh, rocket turret controlling stations. Left or right? The left one. Right, okay. That's good. Uh, and who have I miss? Uh, I'll go on the engineering Vote. station. Yeah, the engineering. All right, so the only, the, only, the only stations that aren't manned are the right rocket and the centre, the, the front and rear turret internally, but they've got their own independent operators externally, yes? Does Max want to take the right rocket? Uh, he can if he wants, if you want. Might as well have somebody on it. Okay. And Doc is Doc is standing between the uh, between the pilot and the commander. Yes? Yes. Excellent. All right, well you've got the uh you've got the um the starting sequence, Cat. You're it's your you're you're the boss. All right. Let's, Let's see hope if she the battery's not fails. dead. <laughs> 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 so, uh, How sturdy was the pyramid? <laughs> I was wondering when someone was going to ask that. How sturdy yeah. is the pyramid? <laughs> uh, it's not very sturdy. Yeah, it seemed to be, like, if I remember correctly, there were rotting planks and whatnot. Yeah, it's... It, it's it, sturdy enough. Why? What are you thinking of? I'm just curious as to if the tank's going to get out without getting damaged. <laughs> okay. It's wood. You just run and right not through. Not only that, when we go out, well, yeah, but you take an 8-inch wooden beam and run a tank into it, yeah, the tank's not going to not take some damage. Yeah, there's um, always a chance at a 99, right? Yeah. It, it, depend, it, it depends on how hard you hit things, how, how fast you hit it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, was that you, Cat? Because it's got Jazz's name on it. Yeah, it was Cat. That's right. Just making sure. Okay. Um, the tank um, comes to life. Um, um, there's a the, there's a shuddering. Um, uh, dust b dust billows up around. Um, the two boys in the turrets don't lose visibility, but um, a lot of dust is kicked up by by the hover tank. Um, and it uh, rises uh, um, a f uh, uh, maybe 30, 40 centimetres yeah, vroom, well done um, above the uh, above the above the, the dirt um, when the tank starts the two hatches, all the hatches close all the hatches 
close um, and the three doors close as well so um, the uh, now where did I say that door was through there hang on let me put a line in so I'm, I'm all alone hey did we figure out how to turn the shield back on no we might want to do that too but I don't know yeah well it's not a shield it's a defense screen it's not quite so is that security, security screen yeah that's a that's a door more or less all right how about I, we just I, do it like that that's what that okay whatever um so uh the four of you are separated from sorry the five of you are separated from the two of you in the back okay or one of you in the back. There's only one back there. Yeah, I'm all alone. You're all alone. Oh, isn't that a shame? Uh, um, you suspect it's very loud outside the tank, by the way. Um, based on the fact of the amount of noise coming through to you guys as it is. Is there um, some kind of intercom system internal? There is. There is an intercom system internal. Cool. Uh, well, I'm going to flip it so on and say, you have does, does anybody have a guess as to how to turn the uh, the anti-personnel screen on? Beep the horn? Dear idea. The commander probably can. <laughs> if not, I can look at my engineering station and see, considering I control the system. Yeah. Well, you okay. control the system. Have a look, see. Well, yeah, probably the command station has a button, too, but yeah, sure, check. Yeah. So, what are you doing, boys? You looking around, or what's the story? I'm trying to activate the shield. There is no shield. The defensive it's a defense screen. screen. Yeah, the defense screen. Defensive screen. Okay. Um, give me well, a logic yeah, roll, I'd please. Yeah, I'd like man. to help look too, if that's okay. I suspect they'll hear us and wake up and come running, and I don't want them to be hurt. So. Yeah. Finally, so dear lord. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, here's the thing. Um. There is no um, there is no internal controls for the defense screen. It appears to be simply via the rod in the hole at the front of the tank. Okay. Um, so there's no so there's no security screen and there's no def there's no uh, defense screen as well. Okay. So that's that just to make sure no one steals it. Got. That's basically so yes, make sure no one steals it. Cat, mm. you um, now that you've got. You, by the way, the, all the screens have lit up, as you would expect. Yeah. Um, you've got monitoring stuff on the on the engineering on the engineering screen. Um, yeah, it's definitely nuclear, and it's definitely way more efficient than UPS. Now that you're operating, you can see that um, the turret, the the two rocket turrets um, are are, are uh, engaged but not active. And the two central turrets are engaged but not active. Okay. Um, the driver, the, the screens across the driver and the commander are showing the interior of the tank. Um, you can flip the lights on if you want. <laughs> uh, sorry, interior of the pyramid, uh, which is still dark. Um, uh, there's a radio communications, uh, or appears to be some sort of radio communications uh, up near engineering as well. Uh, but what you really draws your eye, cat, is there is, and there's no easy way of saying this, so I'll just come straight out. Um, there seems to be some sort of of uh, clock, uh, and that's a supposition on your part. But regularly, every um, n about every one, one and a quarter seconds, um, a, a display, a small display, uh, down the left-hand corner of your main display um, changes repeatedly just like a clock would but it's not on seconds it's about every second and a quarter so mm. uh -oh. so what does it display down? is it like a camera no 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 it's symbols does cat get an appreciation of how long this timer has left mm, well you don't know if it, you don't know what it is you don't know if it's a timer at all you just, it's a set of symbols that that are changing periodically I mean, yeah, every one and a quarter like seconds rpm for all we know could be like the, <laughs> the 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 countdown on the predator 
clearly looked like a countdown, and it was running out, and Arnie ran away. Yeah, so but there's nothing like that. Yeah, but <laughs> but well, but the the the, the, the self destruct on the predator also went beep 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 beep. You got you had an audio yeah um, indicator as well. You don't have that here. Okay. All right. So it's just a series of series of symbols that are changing every one and a quarter seconds. Hey, Cat, are the symbols like the ones on the outside of the tank? Like, they're the same style. Interesting. Uh, hmm. It could be energy levels or fuel usage, right? Could be. I doubt that. That would be on my screen. Yeah, are they yeah, changing on the or are they the same symbols? No, they're changing. Do the symbols ever repeat? Are they changing every... Uh, yeah, some symbols repeat after a while. Yeah, see if you can figure out how many uh, digits there are that repeat. Is it a, is it a base 10 system, a base 16? Uh, that's how you're going to start figuring out, you know, is it counting up or counting down? Well, I don't know if that would tell you the difference, but at least that's data. Okay, it, based on this conversation, uh, yes, it's probably some sort of count to, uh, or whether it's counting up or counting down, you can't tell. Um, and it appears to be um, a, a base 12. Um, or there seems to be 12 symbols that are repeating. Put it that way. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to figure it out now. I mean, record it and move on. Um, is there a PA system? Are we going to are we going to talk to the Heliops, or are we just going to leave the village and hunt Sapphire? Um, well, would our um, Polyvox actually work through a PA? I think that would be a bit weird, would it not? I, I, no, no, we should, I don't see why it wouldn't. Hold the mic to the Polyvox speaker. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know how the Polyvox detects what its target language should be. If you're speaking to a... Like, how, how is that chosen? Oh, you basically, you, you basically program it okay. with a button. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Language 1, language 2, language 3, language 4. Yeah, okay. Um, but usually you're only dealing with one language at a time anyway, so... It doesn't matter. You know, yep. It doesn't really matter. But it's a good question. So you're currently, you're currently hovering about uh, 30, 40 centimetres off the ground. Dust is being kicked up inside a, inside a pyramid. <laughs> inside a battle tank. Yeah. Inside a pyramid. Which way is the tank facing? Uh, it's facing... Basically, you know, wrong map. I think it was. It's east. facing. Um, no, no, it's facing. It's face basically facing towards the um, towards the um, river. Was there room to? There's tr room to rotate it. Yeah, there's got to be. Uh yeah, there would be, but I'm gonna have to get you to give me a roll for that one because that's a con that's a confined space. You know, I mean, it's not. That's a manoeuvre, um, and I need a roll for manoeuvre. So I need a manoeuvring roll for you, please. You try and pivot in place. Yeah, not yet. Which way do you want to face? I just don't. I don't think we want to run out through building twenty-five. We want to go out. I'm yeah, you want to go out to the north side or the east side? Yeah, I haven't got the map up. So go out. <sighs> Or do we actually, I guess, go out the west know, we side. We probably want to go out southeast because we don't want to have to go out the whole kilometer across the river before we head. True, east. true. So go. Well, I would go out. Wouldn't the it be east. easier? Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be easier going out straight north? It's the shortest way out of the village. But we want to go along the river. Into the trees? You think the tank's gonna cruise through the trees? Oh, at a slow speed, it would. I was going to go in uh, onto the river and head east towards where I think the. Oh, okay. Well, see, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, you're going out that way. Yeah, okay, yeah, it makes sense. So everybody vote. Are we headed out? Yeah, let's go. Yep, may yep. as well. Uh, yep. Kat's going to keep an eye on this number and see if she can figure out whether it's a resource yep. depleting or we're about to blow up or anything like that. She would be keeping well, very close to figure out the rate. Like, isn't, you can see when... Isn't that, isn't that the same thing? Isn't resource depletion and blowing up the same thing? Yeah. Uh, it, they're both <laughs> bad, especially if we're over a river. Yeah. <laughs> can I do another yeah. engineering check to figure out the power? Uh, power type, power level, power range, power what? When you say power, what do you mean? Yeah, uh, just figure out if I can get more information about how, what kind of nuclear it is now that it's powered up through no. the system. No, 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 no. I'll give you all the information you're going to get, I'm afraid. But I can operate the... I can tell what the power level's at, though, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. You're pretty well close to 90% power. Okay. Okay. So there's my operator um, role, not so happy, but I'm going to try to go out a little bit south, south, east, so I miss building right. 25, miss, but go through the fields, I guess. Yep, yep, okay. All right, um, uh, so you're just going to drive through the wall, are you? Yeah, I, I don't think we wanted to take time to... Take no, it we down. Can, we can try it's only a point or two gun. off your license. No problem. We could try a test shot with the main gun. <laughs> yeah. Define the main gun. Um, I would think it'd be the center middle one, but I don't know. Seems to have the longest barrel. I don't know. One of the guns. I'll try it. One of the guns. I'll use the gun I'm in. I'll just aim it in front of us and pull right. the trigger. Well, it's a, it's a heavy laser, so what what are you uh, setting the SEU limit to? Setting the what limit? How much energy? How how how, how much energy? One know, one, to one, like, one to one to twenty. Yeah, set it like ten. Ten. Okay. And you squeeze the trigger, and a blast of laser energy uh, fires from the rear turret, uh, striking the wall, and you can roll me ten d ten damage, please. And just curious if the power levels fluctuate. And the power level fluctuates slightly. Ever so slightly. Like we just lost a, like a quarter of a percent? Oh, not even that. It's a flicker. Yeah. Um, so yes, a, a, a large part of the, uh, the pyramid is blasted away. Uh, daylight, early morning daylight streams in. Oh, uh, what was that? Who just shot? Good morning, uh, everyone. Just, just, uh, just weapons check. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, oh, by the way, you had to extend the turret to do that. I should have mentioned that. Um, and um, are you, you're heading out, are you? Yep. Cerise. Okay. We got a door. So you're about... Okay, you're there. Helio scattering everywhere. Um, some are falling to their knees and, and, and bowing. Some are falling to their knees and clasping their hands. Some are running around panicked. Um, some are running for the priests. So, yeah, I'm going to head out um, about quarter speed forward, avoiding any heliopes if I can all right well quarter speed puts you at about where are we uh top speed top speed top speed top speed you still taking notes ryan uh look i was i mean Okay, um, you suspect, t it looks like top speed's around, going to be around about 30 kilometres an hour, based on 
uh, power settings, where you are now, how far, you know, all the rest of the bits and pieces. Uh, you also, it also, um, now that you've started moving forward, you also lift your, your, your maximum healing site, uh, maximum ceiling when you've got full power going, or power going, it appears to be about two metres. Um, so, so. I, I play yeah. low rider on the interior sound system. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Um, a couple of things. Um, there's um, a new signal. There's a new icon on um, one of your display screens, cat. Uh, it's on your. It's on one of your secondary screens, um, Cerise, as well. Um, Hmm? So, is that a role to figure it out? Yes, please. Okay, as you're figuring out, several things happen in very, very, very quick succession. Um, the uh, the icons, whatever they are, on your screens flash red from their neutral uh, neutral um, uh, white color. Uh, they flash red. Um, jazz, not jazz. Babu and Bim Bam both see um, an explosion uh, coming from the uh, east end of the village uh, over this. Whoops. This direction. Um, and um, that uh, you, you get some indication of that explosion on your main view screen too. You to uh, your cat and cat and Theris. Um But uh, Babu and Bim Bam see it for real. Um, um, and sorry, go ahead. Sorry, um, and um, the Heliot seem to be panicking even more than they were. Time to kill some aliens. Uh oh. Whatever it is comes is coming up out of the water. Um, while we're driving. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I just come. Basically, I was pointing towards those huts. I wasn't actually trying to oh. indicate it was coming out of the lake. So. Um, anyways, while we're driving, things. I'm going to get a feel for the turret. I mean, how fast it tracks, how far it goes, in which direction, you know, what its elevation and depression are, that kind of thing, so I can use it more yeah. effectively. Okay. Elevation is 45 degrees. Uh, traversal is 360. Declination is around about 10 to 15. Uh, so yes, you can f and um, you only c you, it, it appears that the only way you can move the turret and things like that is to extend it first. So it won't operate unless it's ex it won't operate at all unless it's extended. Um, mm -hmm. It extends about a meter. Extends about a meter above the above its resting place. Mm. Uh, in the t in the tank's chassis, um, so yes, you can fire on the tank. You can fire on your companions if you really no, want to. I, do, I don't want to. How fast does it turn? I mean, if I'm facing one direction and I want to look directly in the other direction, at how far? How fast does it tur turn? It, uh, it 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 basically. Um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't need meters. It per takes second. one action basically to okay. one turn to right. turn it 180 degrees. Okay. All right. So as if you were in combat, you could track, you know, 180. Sure. Okay. Um, in a in a thing at fire. Um, yeah, I figured that's where you were going to go. Um, Bim Bam, uh, Bim Bam, Babu, are you doing the same or not? Yep. Okay. So you two are playing with your turrets. Just want to get a feel for it in case I have to use driven. it for real. Yeah, yeah. So, um, making your way uh, along the edge of the of the lake, um, you eventually come across four. Well, let's call it what let's, let's call it what you think they are. They appear to be metallic sapphire robots with tracks four feet. Ha! Armed, armed with laser weapons, 
and their and uh, grenade launchers and their uh, killing um, uh, killing heliopes and shooting up the uh, shooting up the um, the village and therefore I need initiative rolls of everybody please I'm going to pull up the combat tracker because we're going to need it um, And we need to reset. And I need to add one. Sorry, I double clicked again. I will be right back. What's going to suck, uh, Babu, is if your gamma gun doesn't do any damage to these robots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would. I can. Now, sorry, Cerise, uh, which one are we taking? This is the first one. The seven. seven. Where are you on the list? Oh, there you are. <laughs> seven for you, nine for Pedro. Uh, six for Bim Bam. Uh, seven for Cat. Um, Jazz got a 17. It's good for Jazz. Babu got a 13. And Vrok got a 7. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm still loading up for the. And also, if we want a token for the map, for the tank on the map and the bad guys. No, nah, it's that don't necessarily need the token. Okay. Nice, oh, but because of the rules for vehicle combat, um, okay. So Jazz, you're up. Oh yep. He's and you generally, gener hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, the vehicle combat rules specify. Oh no, you're using a. Um, no, no, you're using the vehicle itself. Yeah, no, you, you, uh, the, you guys have got to wait for the uh, pilot or commander. Whoever, whoever goes first. Oh really? Okay. That's the rules for vehicle combat. Hmm. So, uh, delay on you, is that right? Uh, yes, it will have to be. <laughs> Both Cat and Cerise are on seven. Rip. <laughs> mm, I know. Uh, um, mind you, you should be able to help out, uh, uh, Cat. Yeah, you're a commander. Give some orders. <laughs> um, so, uh, one of the robots turns and um, fires his weapon at the tank. Uh, and misses badly. Babu? It would be just... You're going to have to hop. R2? What? <laughs> Bad R2. Yeah, Robot 2. Uh, I would just... You're saying Just that? saying that it would be really convenient uh, if some stray shot took out the priest's establishment and all of the evidence of our <laughs> misdeeds uh, went up in fire. <laughs> All right, hang on. There's always a missile the, uh, range. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Robot 4 misses the tank. God knows how they're missing. Maybe they're surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that one missed as well. Uh, Pedro, you're going to have to delay, I'm afraid. Um, the, uh, the fourth robot manages to uh, strike the tank they appear to be using some sort of laser weapon. Um, so, who wants to go first, Cerise or Cat? Cat, you can. Yeah, I would. So let let's just 
in my head. Let's get the vehicle combat mm -hmm. clear. Uh, so as a commander, uh, my j role is probably to spot targets for people. And if I let people know that the target is there and that they should fire on it, then that would allow them to take their action of unleashing yep. fury. Okay, well, Cat would... Uh, yes, um, they can do that. Um, the other thing you need to... Well, everyone's got to go after either the commander or the, or the driver. Um, that's just the rules. Um, you can actually help, help targeting... Um, or by designating which targets should be taken out first, uh, whether the crew follows your directions or not, is another question. Yeah, okay. So, because um. my my real question was, I guess, is is my turn here to designate the target, or can I quickly say that and uh, activate the right rockets and fire that as well? Um, like, h how much can I get away with okay. in my commander turn? Well, yeah, okay, you can do one or the other. Okay. Well, I'm right. going to designate. Generally, the, gen generally, yep. generally, the, the command, generally the commander in a battle like this would designate targets and help with this thing. Don't forget, you've got um, uh, the you've got you've got people on the rockets. Max and Jazz are on the rockets. Don't forget. Oh, okay. So Max did go onto the right. Yeah, we're rocket. fully we're okay. fully manned. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was under we're the impression manned. that that one was still free. Okay. Well. No. 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 For complete randomness, I will designate Robot One. Uh, uh, All right, robot one is being targeted um, on on your on the four targeting uh, screens uh, and the uh, the two domes uh, in the uh, in the turrets. Um, that particular um, uh, that particular robot is uh, highlighted. Uh, you may shoot at it shoot at it or not as you choose. Um, so, uh, Jazz, you held your action. Yep. Uh, so, how do we? What role are we doing to to make the rockets go now? Oh, make the rockets go now. Yeah. Uh, make the rocket go now. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Uh, um, uh, base attack of fifty plus any relevant skill you might have. Such as computer skills or actual or actual uh, real we real real vehicle weapon targeting skills. Does anybody have vehicle weapon skills? I don't believe so. No, Jazz does not. Yeah, okay. So a base fifty. Got it. Yeah, base fifty. And you're firing one of the rockets, are you? Yes. Off you go. A rocket launches from the right hand, sorry, left hand turret. Yep. Uh, streaks ac streaks across the village and just misses. Oh, hang on. Do you which which one were you firing at? Uh, at r robot one. The one that you designated. Yep. In that case, you hit. A. Hey. This is our grenade tactic. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. Um, in which case, I need uh, you can give me a um, um, a roll if you like of fifteen d ten. Oh, nice. Ouch. Hmm. Is it that? Yeah, uh, that uh, and a sapphire attack bot basically um, blows up. <laughs> and rocket part, uh, robot parts come down in a reasonably large area. Jazz thoroughly enjoys this tank. <laughs> yeah, we gotta keep this puppy. Um, yeah, I just want the range on that because that might have a difference. I'm gonna keep remember the range. I think you're inside a short range. Uh, we should start What's a mercenary range? company. Tank four higher. Roughly Tank ten squares, higher. but it depends where that robot was. Yeah, I know. It's what is it? Fifty meters, a square, twenty meters a square, ten meters a square. Ten. And I'm not ten, sure where we are back, at yeah. the moment either. Yeah, no, it's okay. That's all right. I'm just going to get rough ranges. Um. Okay, so Babu, I believe you, Babu, you're you are up. 
right, so uh, the range for your gamma gun is definitely you are definitely point blank range no modifiers to your to hit roll um, so unfortunately 100 minus 50 yep uh, unfortunately there's no bonuses because the designated target is no more oh yeah, yeah. jazz apologizes <laughs> Well, then I'll just take out the one next to it, then. I'm going to take one of these robots off, bit anyway. Yeah. What's up, boo? Alright, so I'll just take out or I'll shoot at number two, robot two. Okay. Okay. That did not work. Hold on. Can't get that one to work. Yeah, thank you. They put a minus 50 at the uh, behind it. Ah, uh, the die one. I didn't put the D in there. Okay. Yeah, I need the slash die. There we go. And that's a hit. Uh, you can roll me some damage if you like. Would you like to know how much damage you want to roll? How oh, much is it? Uh, 20d10. That's a very powerful gamma ray. Yeah, but will it affect robots? If it's radiation? Who knows? I mean, it certainly could. You're about to find out. Uh, and um, a a... Uh, baseball, a bit bigger than a softball, softball-sized hole is punched through the uh, through the uh, robot two's um, chest area. Uh, it uh, sparks and fizzes and goes uh, dead still. Holes is holes. <laughs> holes is holes. Doc. What are you doing? Yeah, okay, so um, there's now radiation and explosions going around. I'm totally horrified. I want to go into the back room and sit at the engineering console. Uh, the engineering console's being sat at. Yeah. Oh, well, then I'll go to the engineering room. There's nowhere to sit in there. I don't need to sit. I just don't want to see the carnage and the I can, I can, uh, I can put you in the closet, trap you in the closet. I haven't come no, out of the closet quite yet. Well, I can put you in the very back room. You just have to promise not to touch any butts. <laughs> so you make your way into the engine, engine room. The engine room is humming along quite nicely. There, The displays are all lit. You're getting uh, information on energy levels, on uh, fuel consumption, on... Uh, there's a graph, a time track graph of energy usage. You can see two dips. Um, as you say, you can see a dip. No, you can see two dips. Uh, one um, just recently and one quite a while ago. Uh, that was probably the, the gamma gun and the heavy laser being fired, respectively. Um, was the gamma more uh, energy intensive? It was. I'll just put my hands in my, my head in my hands and... Call into a corner somewhere? Okay. Okay. Don't touch any case. button. <laughs> Book shouts at him. Cerise? Are there um, any um, checking scanners? I, I assume I'm roughly at that end of the third arrow. 
Oh, you no. are you as a as a driver you can um do a number of things a number of maneuvers um obviously if you had another vehicle to maneuver against it would be different but um and you you would you, you it's no use trying to run down one of these things because you'd fire the top of it because you got a 2 meter clearance um but what you can do is um maneuver the tank to uh either uh improve the aim improve the aim uh, sorry um it, Make the robots harder to hit you. Um, if you want to do, you know, dodge, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, or um, uh, any other maneuver you can, come, you think you can come up with. Um, actually, what I'm more concerned with right now is if there's any type of active scanners. If there's, basically, I want to know is there more than these three robots? So sure. In that case, um, you, you basically put the tank into a, into a straight line without without um, uh, manoeuvring too much and spend some time um, going over the instruments in front of you. Um, again, that's a logic roll, mate, um, to work out what you're seeing. Um, there's nothing else coming. Uh, there, two of the four icons have disappeared off your off the screen, off the uh, off the, the the inverted commas radar screen, uh, if that's what you think it is. Anyway, um, visually you've got the visual view in front of you. Um, on one of the other secondary screens, so um, there's an uh, there's some sort of anomaly, anomaly, anomaly. Yeah. Anomaly. Uh, yeah. Thank you. There's a uh, a. a you think it's some sort of radio, radio, or EM signal, electromagnetic signal. Um, it's it's in the radio frequency range anyway. Mothership um, beacon. Yeah, it could be something like that. Is it like um, the uh, radio receiver we found from the priest? No. No, you don't know what. You, it's, it's not the same sequence. No. Okay. Is it um, is it local or is it? I mean, it's not coming from one of these robots. Um, there is, there is part of the signal coming from the robots, but there's something else coming from, from, t from over to the east. Okay. Uh, is there any way to jam it from here? No, no, no way to jam it. No. Okay. No, no not that you've discovered that's anyway. Okay, that's probably my turn. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Voke. Um. So I've probably been messing around with the system since I tried to get the defense uh, screen back up. Did I notice yep. any other defensive systems? No, but you do you do note the same radio um, you do note the same radio uh, uh, signal um, on your station as well. Is there any way I can power up? I can enhance our weapon system. No. Because we need to do more damage. I'm just saying if I could make it more accurate or something. Okay, then I no. will do a logic check for the radio, I suppose, and try to figure out... Um, well, we know where it's coming from, but maybe decipher... No, you don't. You, you don't know where it's coming from. You know the direction it's We know the direction. From. If I could decipher where it is originating from, or what it is saying, or what it... Is it like uh, a well, stress what, signal, uh, so forth? Yeah, that's well. Okay, yeah, that's a logic roll to work that out. Yeah, you've got no hope. In fact, as far as you're concerned, it's the Miss Universe pageant being transmitted from Trump Tower in Roscoe. Okay. God. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bim bam. What are we doing? I'm gonna take a shot at, at uh, R2. Uh, no, sorry, R2 is R2 destroyed. My fault. I didn't mark oh, off. Oh, sorry. How could you uh, kill R2D2? R2 R3 or R4? C3PO I'll shoot at. Um, uh, okay, yeah, okay. R3 then. R3, right, okay. Again, um, it's 50%. Um, is there, you, you've still got your energy setting set on 10? Or halfway? Same thing. Yeah, I'll set it on 15. Okay, so you dial up to 15. That will be your action this round. Oh, getting it set up? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, well, if you change it, right. if, if you if you change it, it's oh, going to take right, your action. If you don't, fine. Just leave it set at ten. Fine, just leave it set at ten. Yeah. In that case, you can, in that case, you may take your shot.
And you hit. Yeah. And you can roll me 10d10 damage. And the robot takes a wound of some sort, uh, but continues to function. Hmm, darn it. What do I do? What do I do? Says Mac. Shoot it again. Shoot what? Can I turn the dial up for next round? Hang on, guys. Whoa, 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 guys, stop. What? You, you I didn't ask round. for initiative. I didn't <laughs> ask for initiative. Because right. Max is screaming down the intercom. What do I do? What do I do? Shoot! Shoot what? The robots. Oh, uh, okay. No, shoot that tree over there, duh. Uh, he did. He shot a tree. Uh, a missile know. launches. A rocket launches out of the right turret, missing everything, and hits a tree. Does it happen to hit any mountain so I can, you know, get some stone to work on my stone hut? No. No. Still no. not letting me get my stone hut? No. Oh. No, I'm not. So, uh, apart from the two people who've already done it, everybody else can roll me initiative, please. And now Babu's rolling initiative formally. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing out, man. Stone hut. We are not the playing cat, Minecraft. Cat They're the nuts. Sink up here in the cockpit. They're the next big thing. Wow, what happened then? We just lost lights for a second and the rest of the place didn't die. Okay, Jazz. You got a. S nine. And Cat got an eight. Cat, you're not doing well. You want to do better than that, Cat? You're a commander. you got to roll well. Yeah, well, at least it's not Babu in the commander chair. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> My God, we've just had thunder. I think we're in a heat wave here, too, by the way, guys, so if you don't know. Um, we're getting some snow. Yeah, I heard something about 40 degrees. Yeah, yeah, 40 plus. Degrees. We've had we've had over 40 degrees the last four days running. That's 104, I think, in the Fahrenheit scale. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Where's the boo? We're not allowed oh, to say it's hot till it hits 110. Oh, f no, 40's pretty hot. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's winter. <laughs> yeah. uh, a couple, uh, you're very faint, whoever that was. I think that was you. Yeah. Mm. You're very what? I think Bim Bam still has to roll for his initiative. Oh, very faint. faint. Oh, sorry. Uh, Bim Bam 9. Thanks, Bim. Uh, so, everybody, Bim Bam, Jazz, yep. And then the two bots. One who's injured and one who's not. Okay. Uh, robot. The injured robot. Fires a grenade at the tank, uh, which strikes the tank and does that much damage. He didn't want to fire a doze grenade or a tangler? No, frag grenade. Um, and um, Cat, your panel, uh, uh, there's a, um, a, a flashing area of a schematic of the tank um, where the grenade hit uh, has just gone from a green to a slightly yellowy colour. Okie dokie. Oh no, we don't know how to fix this thing. Oh no. Uh, 
and hang on, I haven't finished yet. Uh, yeah, okay. The other robot also fires a grenade at the tank and strikes the tank. Stop hurting my precious. Uh, again, uh, another area of your schematic goes from green to a pa to a yellowy colour. And yeah, that defense yeah. screen was it? I mean, was it repulsive? Like, it, if you touch it, could you push on it and it push things back, or was it just no? To just zap the crap people? out of you. Okay. Just zap the crap out of you. Okay. Uh, Bim, man, you gotta wait. Jazz, you gotta wait. Cerise, you are up. Unless you want Cat okay. to go first. No, I'm sorry. Go first. Cat. Uh, which one was the R three was the one that was injured, right? Yes, R three is injured. Uh, so she'll designate R four as the target. Okay. All right, designate R four as the target. Okay. Uh, bim bam. R four has been I'll designated. Um, I'll shoot R three then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So fifty percent chance. Sorry, what did you say? A 50% chance to hit. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, and, sorry, oh, sorry, I rolled the wrong guy. And while that's happening, Jazz, you're, you're also going at the same time, so Jazz, you can do what you're going to do. What are you doing? Yeah, he, he'll shoot at R4. Does he get a bonus right. for the designation, or? He does. I guess I missed. And you miss Bim Bam, yes, sorry. Again, there's a slight power dip when the uh, nuclear, the uh, gamma gun fires. Is it 55? That was the laser. Uh, that was, sorry, the laser, the laser fires, yeah. Still drops. Um, um, yeah, it's 60, mate. 60, all right. Rot row. Rot row. <laughs> Wasn't it great? rocket. Fail. That rocket goes <laughs> and blows up somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, at least it, went out. it wasn't a critical fail. You didn't hit yourself. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so that was Bim Bam and Jazz. Cerise, what are you doing? Start taking evasive action. I don't know if that's going to matter, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so just give me a, a, a drive and operate machinery roll just to, just to see how good or bad an evasive action you do. It's coming in one sec. Ooh. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, not so well. <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, okay. So that was good. Pedro, still crying in the in the engineering room? Uh, yeah. I mean, unless uh, it seems like the the tank has taken any damage, which it doesn't sound like it has. So. Oh, you, it's been a couple of shocks. Mm. Well, I'm I'm concerned for my patient, but yes, I'll I'll continue waiting. Okay, Vogue. Um, have I? Is there anything? Have I found anything that I can do with the weapons or the engine? Not really, except monitor them. Uh, there's been no damage taken to any of the weapons or anything else like that. Um, with the manoeuvring that's going on though, um, if you want to take a second reading on the radio signal, you might start be able, you might be start able to be doing some triangulation. All right, yeah, we'll we'll try that since you know I can't supercharge weapons or I can't you know initiate a self-destruct sequence. Oh, you need you need to yeah, self-destruct if you want. That's okay. Oh, I can. If you wanted to. Do I need the commander's permission for that? Need is such an interesting word. I think you need all of our permission to do that. 
what? I'm claiming it as my share of the treasure. Yeah, as long as you stay in it. <laughs> so, what are you doing, well, Mac? Uh, I'm trying to get the radios. Find, triangulate the radio signal. Uh, give me an in, give me an intuition roll, please. Oh, intuition. That's right. Give me a, a logic roll, please. A okay, roll, I please. just did. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Look, you reckon you've got a pretty good uh, idea? A couple of more, a couple of more readings, and you might be able to pinpoint the the exact location. Cool. Uh, depending on what goes on, Babu, you have a designated robot and an, an and an injured robot. Yeah. I will shoot the designated one. Okay. You have a 60% chance of hitting. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. At least he's in the front. Oh, yeah. Is it too us. late to turn off his weapon? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, nuclear rifle does not... Uh, gamma gun, same thing. Does not um, fire this round. Um, over the intercom, you can hear Babu swearing. Misfire, misfire. Um, mm. Do the screen show getting... anything? Uh, yeah, look, um, it, it comes up. It comes up something a malfunction on your engineering screen and on the commander's screen. It comes up a malfunction on the front turret. Huh. Okay. Well, looks like I have something to fix. Does doesn't it? Um. What do I do? What do I do? Put the reticle. Put the crosshairs on the target on one of the red targets, the robots, and pull the trigger. Okay. I did. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the right-hand rocket uh, uh, turret uh, fires, and the rocket arcs across the uh, the battlefield and strikes a hut. No, no, on the robots. Oops. Uh, Initius, please. Round three. Something higher than a two. That's a ten. That's good. It's all cat that matters. Cat is slowly getting better. Yeah, I don't think cat. I oh, the driver. Five. Yeah. No. no oh yeah, no. cat or Cerise. That's right. Cat got a 10. What's happening with you, Cat? You can't do that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you don't know. Jazz has uh, rolled two 10s in initiative, and Cat's been poor. And yeah, it's both me clicking the button. Oh, the system doesn't like you. Has everybody rolled? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, i oh, oh. And bot three and bot four. Oh, that's not good. Bot three. And bot four. Babu should have a nine. Babu's got it. Oh, sorry. Uh, and Cerise got a six. Not that it makes that much difference, but there we go. Okay, so Jazz, you've got a hold. Uh, a uh, Robot 3 launches another grenade at the tank. Uh, this one misses. Uh, robot 4 launches a grenade at the tank. And hits. Uh, again, another panel starts uh, goes from green to a pale yellow uh, on your schematic cat. Um, you estimate Katrina. Uh, 
Uh, why is that so big? Wow. Um, hang on, sorry. You estimate 15% damage, maybe a bit more? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. And, uh, where were we? Uh, Vokes got to wait. Pedro's got to wait. Cat! Alright, uh, she'll designate R4 again. Okay. So, Jazz? Jazz will be shooting at R4. Mm hmm. And Mrs. Holy moly. Yep. Voke? Uh, from a quick glance, the for Babu's gun to fire doesn't need to be repaired. It does need a quick repair. You may try and attempt to do so from your station if you wish. Uh, is actually um from what I've seen of the radio signal, is it transmitting to these robots? Uh, could be. Okay, um, well... Oh, what are you doing, quick? Uh... I'll try to fit the turret. Try to fit the turret? What are you going to use? Um... Well, my mechanical engineering? Military engineering? When you got... Where are we? If not, I can use my technician repair. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for, technician repair. Okay, we'll see if I can fit... Nope. Not this turn, you can't. Unfortunately. Yeah, uh, not more or nothing. Mm, no, okay. Babu, um, you're in a turret that's not working at the moment. Yep. Is there what a do chance you want to do? that uh, Cerise is going to have a shot at fixing it from her station? Not what she's driving. Oh, she's driving. You, you can have a go if you want. Yeah. If you can what come up with a decent though? reason. What skills have you got? I ain't got none. <sighs> got none at all. You can try a logic roll. Uh, try and, uh, try and uh, fix it. There will be penalties. But not that many penalties. The uh, On the engineering and commander screen, uh, it appears that the front turret is back online. Good. Woot. Woot, woot. Bim bam. So both the, both the robots are still on. Y sorry, Matt, you're very faint. Sorry about that. Both the robots are still up. Yeah, both, both robots are still up. Uh, three is damaged, four is not. Four so is targeted, it, designated. So that means four you is get a bonus on that one? You get a bonus to hit, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll aim at four then. Okay. Whoops, I need to roll the percent first, sorry. Yes, it is wrong with that first, yes. Oh, darn it. Well, ten, ten out of die, isn't that basically a percentage? Yeah. Eh, it basically Technically, is a percentage. Yeah. You made it both yeah. times. You, you made it both times, yep. Uh, so the first, you, you do hit, and if that's your damage roll, is that 10? Okay. Uh, robot 4 is very heavily damaged, based on that. Okay. Uh, but both are still operating. Cerise! Wait, uh, Bim Bam, are you on the laser? Yes. Yes. Okay. Darn, that roll isn't very good. I should have, uh, I should have... Rolled again. <laughs> uh, you can increase your power, Bim Bam. 
Uh, he, um, it takes a turn to do that. Ah. Um. Cerise, uh, can I designate a second target, or can the computer only have one designated at a time? Uh, only one. Only the commander can designate it's only one at a time. Okay. And then I'll just tell um, um, Max to hold his fire, and then I'll try to dodge again. Okay. All right, no worries. In that case, much better. Way much better. Okay. Uh, in that case, initiatives again, please, people. Hey, cat, you're finally coming through. Bim bam ten. Uh, babu, 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 babu. Back online with a six. Jazz still rolling nice and high. Vogue on an eight. Uh, Pedro on a fourteen. And Cat on a thirteen. That's everybody. Yep. Robot one, robot two, or three and four actually. Oh, that's good. So that makes Cat will go first. All right. Uh, she'll keep four targeted. Hit four targeted? Okay. Yep. Do you have to renew Jazz? it every time? I don't want to actually want to change it, basically. Right, because, I mean, could you work on the radio signal because four is still targeted? Uh, you could I if you wanted. Know. You could if you wanted. Okay, so it's really just changing the target that costs an action. Yes, change that cost in action. Um, but Cat would probably have no idea of the radio signal, like thinking not, role playing wise. She would not this. This is all. Not this this is all Vokes. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, we, Cerise we and no, Voke know of it. Yeah, but Cat hasn't spotted it yet because she's been concentrating on the targeting. True. True. So, Jazz. Uh, he'll do what he's doing before shooting at uh, four. Okay. And misses again. That's three times in a row on a 60% chance. I, I hate know. this dice. <laughs> Change the color. Doc? Yeah, okay. Well, it, um, I guess I'll... There's been three blows to the ship, to the tank so far. Yeah, I think I'll come back out and see how Max is doing. Uh, Max is freaking out. Um, he's out of his depth and showing it. I'll try to calm him down. That's enough for me. Okay. Calm down, Max. Okay. All right. No, no, that's good. That'll help out. Uh, bim bam. Okay. I'll try for R4 again. Okay. Just, because it was designated just. That's what it says. <laughs> okay, good. Ten, ten uh, so d ten. ten. Yeah, ten d ten. And R four uh, is slagged out from a shot from the heavy laser in the rear turret. Turret, Cerise. Wow, we were way over killing them, doing a hundred points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hit him for like him. sixty last time, and he was still alive. Yeah, I, I think that was probably R3. have about hundred. No, that was R four and R three. Both R three and R four have been damaged at the start of this round. Oh, okay, cool. That's dodging. Cerise? dodging. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's see how we go with these. Because of the dodge, that's a miss. And 
because the dodge, that's a miss. You, the two more grenades uh, get fired and are missed at from the two uh, robots. Vote. Well, isn't it one robot? Two. Uh, uh, one robot, sorry. Yes, one robot. Thank you. Uh, I will do more work on the radio, and um, okay. I will Give call for the commander's help on deciphering the radio, uh, the uh, transmission location. So, commander, you get a oh, very nice. Um, you get a uh, a call from your engineer uh, about triangulation of some sort of radio signal. And he'll, I'll send along the progress I've made so far, which. Assuming if I'm trying to triangulate it, then I've made uh, contact with two out of the three points. So, mm -hmm. I know. So it helps helps narrow it down. It helps, yeah. So yes, Babu, one robot left, non-designated. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Can't possibly go bad twice in a row, can it? You like tempting fate, don't you? Yeah. There you go. Not like that, you know. <laughs> Waited. <laughs> I uh, really roll me the. It. Uh, yeah, you really fixed it. Roll me the dice, please. What was it, 20? 21. Uh, the Gamma Gun, yeah, 20. 21. No, just 20. And the, uh, the last row. remaining. The last remaining robot uh, disappears in a cloud of robot right through parts. The head. Right, right through, through the, the CPU. Mm -hmm. um, the screen is clear of enemy targets. Um, you want to give me a triangulation roll, Cat, because you just we were starting to work on that. Uh, yep. Logic. Logic, please. Okay. Uh, hang on. Uh. Hmm, okay, that's why I can't find it. I haven't got it loaded. Hopefully we got the location before if it possibly ended when we killed the last robot. No, the right the signal's still there. Okay, good. It might be a homing signal for the robots. Good. Seems to be coming from that general area. Sorry. On the rift sorry, map. sorry. Yeah, on that map. I was guessing farther south, but that's okay. Are we able to pinpoint it more? Uh, possibly, if you guys all work on it. In the meantime, what's everybody doing? Stand what's everybody else doing? Area. Sorry, what was that, Babu? Scanning the front area. Okay. Uh, from Kat's commanding chair, does she can she see any controls that might uh, activate some kind of repair to the tank? Um, yeah, that would well. Give me a logic roll, mate, please. Uh, nothing from the armor repair. Oak will uh, try to see if he can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Again, no, no, there are repair, repair circuits, but they seem to be for internal components, which uh, seem to all be working in working properly at the moment. Um, there's, but nothing for armor. Hmm. That makes sense. Um, the Heliopes are just starting to poke their heads up. So that's about where I want to put the tank. Can can we? Sorry, 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 sorry. Which map do you want? Uh, Helio Village. Village. That's right. I'll pull it up. I haven't got it up. Uh, there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
the, the grain tobacco. About the size yeah. of the tank. Um, uh, give it a try, yeah. Yeah, I want to park it there. I want to power down the lift fans and, and land, but I still mm. want all the internal systems and weapons live. I don't know if the tank will do that. Uh, if you give me a logic roll, we'll find out. Yes, you can uh, achieve that, those desired aims. So uh, you're not moving, the li you're, you're basically settled to the ground, but you've got internal power, and you can still operate the turrets if required. Okay. So I'll say over the intercom to everybody, so now's the time we uh, pitch our new religion. Anybody want to do it, or shall I? Uh, Voke is going to keep working on the signal. Uh-huh. I think, Babu, you were our diplomat, weren't you? Yeah. I can try to sell this. You'd have to leave the tart to do it. This is true. And you're... Well, you could easily just pop out your head. Pod, yeah. Since, you know, you're all alone in your turn. I'm happy by myself in my turret. Do you want me to come out with you? It probably wouldn't. It'd probably be safer if you didn't come out. So the village is now a flaming wreck? No, no, no. The, the east end is pockmarked. There's a couple of the huts are burning. Um, there's a couple of dead heliots floating around. Uh, and, of course, four, four wreckages from... Uh, four robot wreckages. More importantly than that, though, um, some of the trees are... The, the forest is actually on fire from a couple of missiles, a couple of rocket shots that went astray. Does it look like that fire will put itself out? Not really. So are we talking burning down the whole for forest? Well, it's wet forest, so... Um, it's not particularly dry so it shouldn't burn like it shouldn't burn like the California fires or an Australian bushfire so it might uh, burn a hundred meters 200 meters something like that okay so it's not going to be devastating for the village well it depends yeah, on the unlike issue. missiles or, or radioactive well I mean it's not going to take out half of the forest that they live near no it shouldn't maybe Um, I do need to ask though, and I think I know the answer to this. Where's the Explorer parked? Um, by Hut 11 out front, right there. Was yeah. it? I thought you left it in the forest. Uh... No, that's always the where east. we had it parked. Yeah, we always had it parked um, out front. Yeah, because okay. we, we walked into the forest when we tried to contact the other Helios. But that was a, lot, that was a fair way away. Yeah, okay. Now, fair enough. Um, if that's the case... Um, the Explorer's taking some damage too. Okay. From the robot. I didn't realise the Explorer was there, but the, the, the robots would have seen the high-tech Explorer and targeted it. Uh, how much damage it's taking, it's unknown at this stage, so you're not, you're not over there. Do you want me to roll more logic chats for the... Yes, please. I'll, well, I'll just, just time it better. That's right. <laughs> Pardon me. Yep. Yep, okay. Let me know if you want me to roll more logic checks for. Yeah, you're pretty sure that you're pretty sure you, you, it's that it, that there. I know that's a, you know, I can't make this circle any smaller without actually getting it disappear, having it disappear. But certainly to within half a kilometer or even less radius. Can I work on it even more? Not really. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can do something about the armor. Look more into the repair system. Yeah, no, there's no way that there's no way you'll do an armor repair from inside. Uh, anything that any possible tools that the tank has? Uh, it, there are some, there are, there are some tools in the compartment uh, in the engineering room, yeah, but um, they're not replacing armor is a shop job. You're not going to do it in the field. Yeah, well, they have advanced technology. You and don't, you and it's only one. <laughs> Then he'll go into the engineering room and find out more about the tank. Yeah, okay. Um, K 
Cat, can you give me a logic roll too for the for the triangulation? Because you said you were working on that. Yep. Um, and do you want to use logic or intuition for this next roll? I want to use logic because it's much higher. <laughs> 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 All right, you can use. So give me a logic roll for the for the triangulation and a second logic roll for what I'm about to drop on you. I think we found its yeah, exact you, location. You, yeah, you, yeah, you're pretty sure you know where where, where the radio signal is coming from. Yes. Okay. Um. So who's getting out and saying saying what you're saying to the villagers? Well, Babu. What are you saying, Babu? I'm saying that we have been sent by the gods to protect you people because you have been defying the gods by holding everything that they have given you and keeping them from your brothers who wander. Okay, this doesn't go over that well. Uh, there's muttering, there's murmuring, there's, you know, um, yeah, someone, blasphemer! Yeah, um, but that call isn't taken up very strongly. Um, where are the priests? Um, uh, get the priests. Um, yeah. So, um, your friendly neighbourhood, um, oh, don't, don't say Spider-Man. Your, fr your friendly neighbourhood guide, Leakum, Leakar, uh, looks, looks incredibly uncomfortable. Um... He he was the one who probably trusted you guys the most, and you've made him feel uncomfortable. Uh, you can see him, Babu and Cat and Cerise through the video screens. Um, yeah, he's he's not he's in two minds. You know, he thought you were friends, but obviously, you know, now this is a bit of a shock to his system. It sounds like we probably don't want to leave the explorer here. Just saying. <laughs> Babu, you want to add some more? Tell them that we are here yeah. to help them. That I'm, the I'm devils would have burned their whole village down. I'm going to look at him. That's what I want to just... You know, I want to try to use my persuasion on him to point out that the robots were attacking the village. You guys okay, have give the protection here and it, we were able to get the god's weapon working to protect you and it was not being used by the priest to protect you. Okay, give me a roll. Persuasion roll. Doc! See? Oh, that's... Can you... I didn't see what the roll was. Oh, that's because I've got... <laughs> because oh, it's a critical fail. It's a one. Uh, no, no, it's a critical fail. Um, yeah, no, that doesn't look... They're not, they're not convinced over that, mate. In fact, you think you may have... You, in fact, you're pretty sure you fluffed it. Um, they're looking angry. Some of, them are starting, some, of them are, some of them are starting to reach down for rocks. Um, Lee Cat. Carr's... Lee Carr's hand is he's got his pistol in his hand and it's it's on its way up. it's not on its own way up very fast, but it's certainly on the rise. Now, just before a second. Doc, um can I get um you're sitting there talking and, and, and trying to calm Max William down. Uh can you give me a um I suppose a diagnostic role is the best the best um option for you. Um Yeah. Yeah, he's fine. Max is perfectly, perfectly okay. Not freaking out at all. <laughs> I'm convinced. You're convinced, yes. Um, y you think you might need a second opinion from a proper psychologist. Uh, fellows, we may need some assistance with, with Max, Maximilian here. Unfortunately, our psychologist is currently about to be have rocks thrown at his head. 
Yes, I believe um, now is not the time to. Uh, I, I, now's the time to leave. If you want to get out of the tank and get the explorer, you can be my guest. But I'm. So what are you doing, Babu? Um, they're starting to turn ugly. And you are exposed. Tell them we shall go destroy the devils that came to destroy you. We <laughs> shall be back. Go destroy the devils from the stars. And I'll get back uh, to my turret. See, yeah, just in time, because as you disappear into your turret, a rock clangs off the hatch. Um, uh, cat, the rocks aren't doing any damage, but uh, they're making a hell of a ring, a hell of a racket. No, the ship's landed, Jad. It's in the landing site on the Rift Valley map. So, what is everybody doing? And I haven't forgotten you, Cat. Uh, the man's just kind of waiting to see what happens with these villagers, and is very glad he's inside a tank. <laughs> well, they're currently throwing rocks at you. Is Babu back inside? Babu is back inside. Yep. Then I'll start up the engines and say, shall we go? That went well. Yeah. Volk is going to be looking around in the engine room, uh, trying to understand the tank systems better. Okay. To see if he can't, you know, understand more about the weapon systems and what he can do. Yeah, that's okay. I understand. And... I will I will slowly proceed out into the river. Yes. Into the lake, if nobody yes. objects, and then we will head east. Babu will start scanning. Okie dokie. Going start. We'll start off at about half speed do some maneuvers, make sure we understand how the how it works and get comfortable with it. All right. Guessing All right, well, the dock... That's a long yeah. trip. Yeah, well, no, it's only, what's that, 10 clicks, maybe a bit longer? Call it... Okay, if the tank goes at 30 clicks an hour, uh, you should make that in about an hour and a bit, assuming you, you, you don't do anything too stupid like crash. Right. Um, okay. Uh, the doc, the doc really reckons that um, Babu needs to take a look at Max. Yeah, Max is not well, fellows. So uh, a couple kilometers from the village, I'll pull off in an opening that looks good. I okay. Need to look at Max. Well, you're the shrink. Oh, out there. Okay. Okay. Sort of. Well, you're the best thing, you're the closest thing we've got to a shrink, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you pull over about there. While we pull okay, over. Yeah. Volk will go outside and look at the damaged armor plate. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 um, it's pretty superficial scarring. Um, although there are some deep gouges where the frag they look like frag grenades went off. Um, again, there's no way you're going to repair it without a shop. Um, I mean, you could you could you could strap some wood boards to it if you had wood boards. Um, there might be something back in the ship, your ship. You could you could strap to it. Um, but uh, an actual proper repair would take a shot. So we've the left tank. the explorer behind, yeah. But does yeah, this, this metal is, seem yeah. to be metal that, like, is equivalent in sturdiness to the UPS metal? Sent? Yeah, it's hard, it, yes. Yeah, right. it looks like it, it, it's just pretty much the same. It's, it's something you, you can't use out in the field. So the armor. Um, the, so, like, the durability of the armor is the same that the UPF, or very similar. Very UPF. similar. 
Yeah, it appears to be to you. The tankless advance would be damaged by a frag grenade. I mean, it could deflect a frag grenade with, you know, without even armor, really. Yeah, but the frag grenades went off on the shit went off on the hull. I did say it was superficial. Right. <laughs> anyway, um, you you gonna give, you, you need to give me a psychopathology roll, please, um, Babu. Yeah, the tank isn't pretty. That's all. Mm. Yeah, Matt's is going insane. Well, Max is sitting there rocking back and forth and crying, and you reckon he's fine? Yeah, we're, he's he's definitely fine. He just needs some fresh air. Why don't we give him a sedative? You could do that. Put him to sleep. Okay. Yeah, let's let's give him a sedative. Okay. Well, that's an administered drugs roll, please, Doctor. Which is pretty easy to make, of course, but... So, uh, you you give Max a shot, uh, and a few minutes later, Max is um, asleep on the floor. Can I have one of those, please? Are you sure about that? I'm going back to the turret. I'm going to shoot. You're going back. You're going back to the turret. Okay, you can do that. Um, Cat's been rather quiet lately. Um, also looking rather worried. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm uh, Cat thinks she's figured out um, her little her little symbol problem. Ah, excellent. Ah, uh, maybe not. Yeah, just as we left the Explorer behind, this tank blows up. <laughs> um, it, it, you're pretty sure it is some sort of countdown as opposed to something else. Uh, what it's counting down to um, is still unknown, although you have suspicions, I'm sure. Do you have suspicions? Well probably the thing that we suspected all along that we yeah, took I'm some kind of didn't those power the puppy down didn't those symbols turn red when the robots attacked nope they were, they were oh, okay. icon other icons on a on a different display screen can we make any so logic checks but for the countdown um well that's what cat, cat, that's what cat's been doing um yeah you reckon you've got you're not, it's, it, you're not sure how long, but sometime in the next, say, 24 to 48 hours would be your best guesstimate. Yeah, okay. So I would share this with the party, uh, that we potentially have a 24-hour time limit on this tank uh, at our best guess. Uh, well, if we uh, powered it down and turned it back on again, maybe it resets, right? Maybe. Or maybe it doesn't. It I mean, it could be a a, um, um, a timer where you've got so much time to enter a security code or something. If you power it down, it won't come back up until that code's entered. Indeed. Yeah, chances are that you know if you turn it off, it's the systems are still online, so the timer is still most likely going. Anyways, 24 hours is more than enough time to go hit this base, if that's what it is. Yeah. When did it morph from a from a, an artifact to a base? It's an outpost. Well, the Sathar artifact, where or where the the base where these robots came from, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I'm just wondering when it morphed from a because we're talking about Sathar artifact, Sathar artifact, Sathar artifact, and all of a sudden. It's base. <laughs> is it a Sapphire artifact? We don't, don't know. know. What it is. Wasn't a conscious switch of language. <laughs> oh, uh, and, uh, can Voke yeah, figure out how to, on his side, change the power level of the heavy laser? No. No, yeah, so I can't, for instance, bump it up for him. Not, not from the engineering console. You can't do that. Okay. From the engineering room. No. 
is there anything different from the engineering console to the engineering room in, th in terms of things I can do? Pretty much, no. <sighs> Alright. I'll go back to my console then. Okay. Um, Bim Bam, someone suggested you up your laser, you're up your laser settings. Is that what you're doing? Um, yeah, I can do that. I guess I'll crank it up to. Hey, I have a Volk feeling it uses more power the higher it gets, but. Yeah, I was going to ask Voke, Is there any reason to think that we can't sustain full rate of fire with the laser and the uh, gamma gun? Uh, can I take another look at the uh, power levels because? Certainly. All right. Uh, can I even notice a change from when we started? Uh, I'll go through all the charts. Yep. And okay. I'll make an estimate, an educated guess using math and all that. Uh, give me a logic roll, please. Um, look, uh, sustained combat, i.e. 24 hours or more, um, you would have a significant effect. Um, the amount of the amount of power uh, your brief battle so far has used um, is pretty um, almost insignificant um, in terms of a total power output. Um, you had 90% fuel before, roughly before uh, you started playing around. You've got about 89.5, I suppose now, maybe 89.7. You know, it's the amount of energy you've used so far is minimal. Uh, fuel you've used is minimal. Um, so, um, yeah, now if the you power sit there, output, the, the if you not sit the there, fuel, but the power output was that enough to sustain both weapons full rate of fire? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it should be. Okay, that was the. Oh, okay, that, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, you should be fine to fire both at once. Um, I oh, still wouldn't do it for, I wouldn't do it for eight, eight to twelve hours um, in a single stretch. <laughs> and Volk will do a full inspection on Babu's turret to ensure that he didn't actually break anything. Okay, well, give me a technician repair roll, please. And I guess Bim Bam will turn the laser up to 20, I suppose, if that's what you guys want. Yeah, there's no reason you to might conserve. As well. yeah. Not if we have a 24-hour timer. Well, that's what Cat suspects. It's a 24-hour timer. Yeah. I take it that the turret's in working condition and... Yeah. Nothing that... And there's no damage from Babu's whatever happened there. Hey, sorry, what was that? So there's no damage, or if there was damage, Volk was able to fit. Yeah, it looked like a simple short. Um, so, yeah. Can Cat man it from the commander's seat? Not, well, uh, uh, yes, but there's penalties to fire. Oh, okay. For that matter, you could, you could man it, for, you could man, man the, the station, so... I could man the station too, except for Cat and I, there's man... both a door in our way. Yeah, well, it's, it's opening the door, it's just a matter of slapping the door open. Yeah. I mean, I can just, you know, body hug the door. Yeah, I mean, I, one, one of you guys should man it. I don't think engineering is, unless we have another weapons failure again, right? Yeah, I can man the right rocket turret. Okay. You want to move the right rocket turret? I mean, again, I don't mean to put anyone on the spot, but Doc's not doing anything at the moment. He's not going to be able to... He's not going to be shooting. No, I know. I'm Stick just him on the thing. engineering. Uh, I don't think he can do anything on the engineering console. Yeah, other than perhaps try to logically figure out what's going on but I'll mention that you know Max is asleep on the floor and I put him there so I'm kind of he is my patient mm-hmm oh he's perfectly fine he's just asleep
Yeah, I mean, you can show him what you know, uh, at least some of the, the monitoring. That way, if some sort of warning comes up on the engineering console, he can at least see it and come get you. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I can do that. Mm, okay. Ooh, good. Yes, good idea. Yeah, since your weapon skills don't translate, so yeah, that's a good idea. Jazz is now the commander, our military genius. Okay, so, makes perfect sense. With the um, with the artifact, we knew the last one had a defense system at one kilometer. Um, I'm skeptical about approaching too close on an open plane like this. Is that trees or is that mountains that it's on the edge of? Trees. So when we go, guys, I don't know if we want to come along the north shore there and come out of the trees, if we want to go south and try to approach it from the open desert. Uh, I think if we go through the trees, we're going to hit all the trees. Well, come along the coast. We can come down the water along yeah, the sure. coast that would be sheltered good. by the trees. And then we also have that missile. I don't know if we can... Do we, can we figure out any more about the missile? Can anybody else... I mean, how to target it, what the range is. Well, I think you said five kilometers? Yeah. Out, out to four kilometers. Four kilometers, okay. Out to four kilometers, maximum range. Uh, the radius of the, bl the radius of the blast radius? No, don't, no idea. But yes, you worked out how to, you worked out how to target it. Um, so, rough plan. If we're going to use the rocket, we might as well use it maybe at two to three kilometers maybe two well, and a half we don't kilometers. even know what the heck it is all we know is that there's a signal there uh we knew it does an emp right yeah well we know the missile yeah, yeah. is an emp missile but we just detected a radio signal and that's all we got right right but before we're gonna go hit the base i assume since we're in a tank we're gonna if hit it's it a base boke doesn't believe your story uh, artifact so i mean we can go in or we can go in shooting. I'm convinced it's a Sathar artifact, and my suggestion is we go in guns blazing by starting with the missile. But if you guys don't uh, want to do that, I mean, we shouldn't it's shoot reasonable missile at something we didn't know what it is. Vogue um, Vogue doesn't think so. I think maybe the best thing we could do is um figure out a little bit more about these symbols and see if we can at least. We can't figure out their alphabet and their language, but we might be able to figure out the numbers, like what numbering system they're using, what base it is, um, what the different digits are, that kind of thing, because then we'd be able to tell things like ranges and speeds and stuff like that. Well, we know it's a 12-digit uh, system from the from the countdown. Okay, so it's base 12. Estimate, yeah, we, we've got an estimate of how long that is. So we know the 12 number digits. Do we know, so we probably know what order they go in, too, which is good. Yeah. Um, so we should be able to figure out the ranges, assuming the range dial is calibrated with those yeah, numbers. Yeah, one to four kilometers. Okay. So, so we know the range. So. I, I don't think it's a good idea to shoot a missile at something we don't even know what it is. I can't argue with that. It's not my, I still like the idea of blowing it up first, but I understand. <laughs> That's because you're. That's because you're an inherently violent person. No, I'm. I was not until Volturnus. I didn't say was. I said ah. Yeah. When it comes to Sathar and when it comes to St Streel Corp, I yeah. Hey, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. What imaging man, system do we have on the tank? Can we see it from several kilometers away? Can you see what from several uh, kilometers away. Uh, if there's anything at the uh, estimated origin point, is well, there that's a zoom what? camera? No. What are the sensors like? Yeah, any uh, general, like general, visual, general visual range. So they don't have magnification on. Them? Don't appear to. 
Well, it looks like someone's gonna have, have to hop out of their turret and just put on their magma goggles and look. Okay, what's the range on those? Magna goggles? Uh, well, the, um, I think they're times 50, aren't they? Let me look. Triple, there you go. Yeah, triple it is. Triple. There you go. So, you know, um, Generally, by the way, generally you can see the general rule of thumb is you can see a man at a kilometre. So we can see it from three kilometres away, whatever no, it we might. We can see be. a person. Oh, so you if, if you, it's an yeah. artifact, we could see it more than that. Hmm. We'll give you a rough idea what you're looking at size-wise, but you're looking from there. It's still ten, fifteen kilometres away from where you are at the moment. Yeah, but I think we're ready to get going, and everyone's in their positions they want to be, so we can get going, right? So, with magna goggles, can we see anything at the target area yet? Nope. Not a blessed thing. is ticking as well, so... Not well, a thing. I, would, I guess I would go to 10 kilometers and take a peek, and then 5 kilometers and take a peek. Sure. The question, guys, is how do you want to approach it? Do you want to approach it along the tree line, through the along go the Go like that, I suppose, and then go down, down like that, right? Yep. So, I mean, that's my proposal. Mm-hmm. The so big stop. problem there is that if we engage it, we're engaging it at least, at least on the water or over trees, which. Won't be over trees. Yeah. So Through the trees, being... maybe, but yeah. Well, the the thing is, is I'm I'm saying, can we approach? I mean, if we come up across the, I don't know if this is desert or ice field or what this is. They're gonna uh, see fields, us coming. Plains, 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 grasslands, right. grasslands. Yeah. Well, we can hug this coast. We can hug the this coast and uh, essentially just cross at the river. So, you know, we just follow this path. No, I know. That's I agree with that suggestion, but the, the comment is then we engage at close range, which I think is probably fairly good. I mean, we, we can hit be... from far away. Yeah, well, the proton just, gun just... can do five. The yeah, the gamma, the gamma gun. gun's got a maximum range of 5K. The rocket launches are each a kilometre, and the heavy lasers is two kilometres. Maximum range. Extreme right. range. Minus 40 to hit range. Yep. Still makes it possible to hit. Yeah. I think the laser would go the furthest. Yeah, the gamma gun's the furthest. You got, with targeting assistance, you got a 20% hit chance at extreme range. Yeah. Which is not bad. I mean, if we wanted to attack at extreme range, coming across the plains would be better. But they're going to see us coming. I, I'm assuming there's some sort of surveillance system on it, right? They sent out robots, so there's apparently some sort of robot guarding us. Yeah, I think and we should go the red route. And yeah, what does I mean, we know it's in that general area. We don't know yeah, that's fine. its where it's specifically. Yeah, so um, th I think that means we would stop around. We would stop around there. Is that 10 kilometers, Matt? Yeah, uh, give or take, yeah. So along there, we'd stop to see what we can see. I'm still looking for a spire or a, a peak. And then before we come across that river, stop again. Mm hmm. All right. You're not talking. So that. you make it. You make it to that first point you mentioned earlier, um, and stop and have a look out. See, and all you can see is nothing. Planes, 
um, uh, you know, uh, a few rises and falls in the plains, you know, um, trees, water, um, you know, nothing. Not a, not a sign of jack. Then we, the uh, signal is still there? No, no the, signal has now, the signal has now died, died away. That died away about halfway along between that point and when you stop to administer drugs to Max. So when we turned on the tank, it sent a signal out that activated the uh, this main beacon, and the beacon lit up and sent a signal somewhere out in space to alert people that the tank had been started, and now it's done. No. I think no, it was a homing beacon for the robots. Yeah, it's probably a control signal for the robots is, is the assumption, and it's probably a true one. I mean, well, we didn't look at the robot get... wreckage, so we can't know for sure well, if it's too that late was... now. You've left the village. Yeah, I know. But instead of it sending a signal to an alien race that isn't the Sathar, um, well, yeah, I... chances are unlikely. Anyways, what do we see at the second stop point? Okay. Well, you don't make it to the second stop point. Um, you make it. You 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 make it to about hang on, uh, roughly there. Give or take. Uh, when um, two heavy laser blasts um, come from the general direction of your uh, triangulated target, um, both of them um, striking the uh, striking your tank. All right. Time uh, to hang on a minute. Uh, um, the second shot actually manages to, well, something manages to penetrate um, the 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 tank into the general um, combat control area. Uh, oops, where is the um, into basically area four. Um, Doc, you're in area four, aren't you? Yeah. Who else is in area four? Is it only, is it only you? Max. Matt's and the Doc. All right. Uh, Doc, um, just from sp um, spalling, if you know what spalling is. Yeah, it's when the uh, stuff inside the walls comes off. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you take six points of damage um, if you're wearing a, uh, a, um, a, a a skin suit or a, um, a kinetic, kinetic screen. It'll take half that. Okay. Although a lot of military vehicles have anti-spalling. They do. Coatings. Yeah, but the uh, the the end result is so it, it's a it's a laser bl it's a heavy laser blast that hit the tank, uh, and obviously what something got through and. Um, you get a space, for a face full of sparks or something. The bottom line is you take damage from, from being, yeah, from, from being hit. Um, so both shots seem to come in um, from the same location. Um, you're not quite sure exactly where. Um, there's no location at all on your goggles that you can see at all. Uh, the laser bolts came out of nowhere, and that's a good place to leave it till next week. Oh, uh, with the laser bots, they came out of nowhere. So, uh, it's full of stars. Me. Everybody enjoy themselves. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was fun. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, Ryan, if you could play those um, ending credits, and um, we'll see everybody in a fortnight's time when they're yeah, for those uh, those watching the channel. I'll talk to everybody afterwards. <laughs> 
Well, that's it for this session. We hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did. We'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape and Twitch. And of course, all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years. I'm Dulux Oz, and on behalf of the entire gaming group, we'd like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Until then, may your God go with you.